You have the stats to back it up. I got the stats to back it up. All uh, right. So did Seattle Sounders this weekend. Oh, yes. The Seattle Sounders. Oh, we started? Yeah. Yeah. We, welcome, we, we, back. We, welcome back, everyone. So, MLS Cup, did you guys get the chance to watch it at all? Anybody? Oh, yeah, all the highlights on Twitter. Oh, yeah, you, d- you know what? That's probably better than a lot of other people. <laughs> so, MLS Cup has come and gone. Um, Seattle Sounders are your 2019 champions with a dominant 3-1 victory over the, Seattle, or over the Toronto FC, who I predicted to win, and they did not. So, it was just a rough week for just predicting all I around. Seattle. He did pick Seattle. So Ethan officially knows more about soccer than I do. Oh, but uh, a ball, right? The a ball kicked into the <laughs> net. Seattle did that more than Toronto. But um, it was a tale of it just to basically run it down because basically it's a tale of two halves. Toronto dominated possession early in the game. I'm pretty sure it was like over sixty percent possession in the first half. They had some good chances to score. They just couldn't capitalize. Stefan Fry, the goalkeeper for Seattle, made some big mm-hmm. saves. Then Seattle adjusted. They were able to play back. Their strategy in the second half was uh, Seattle decided, let's press on defense and create the fast break. And that's what they did all the second half. Um, Toronto looked flustered. They were starting to double team some of their best attacking players, forced turnovers, and were able to, you know, off the high press, go fast down the field, break away. And hell yeah. Hell yeah. Led to yeah. three goals. Josie Alter had a pity goal in the 90th minute. Uh, goals by uh, Kevin, well, Technically, it was an own goal, but Kevin Leardam, mm-hmm. who I talked about, it was going to be a big piece for that team. Um, Lucas Rodriguez, who was the MLS Cup most valuable player. And uh, I, that I know it, he's the MVP, so can't go wrong with that. God, he's great. I yeah. know. Um, he, ball. <laughs> he, a, he did have a pretty sick goal, though. He kicked the ball so hard. And Raul Rui Diaz, their best player, had a goal, too. God, I so. love that. Yeah, no, he's, God, he's solid. He's so good. So yeah, good. So fucking good. God <laughs> damn. I will say this, though, like, totally cool thing. Do you know that was actually the most attended sporting event at Century League Field? Yeah, history? I saw that. That's cool. I lo- As a big soccer guy, I love to see that because that just means the sport's just growing, and I love that. But, yeah, so I, now we wait until 2020 for the new season. I was to pick a soccer team, I would pick players from the Cup. Apparently. Yeah. 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 yeah, Seattle all the way too. It's all right. Seattle's just warming enough for Minnesota United to take it next year. Maybe we'll find out. We will find out. Well, Minnesota, you said. Yeah, so Minnesota bad. beat Penn State. Yes. Holy shit! The goal. Double A F. Everyone, the Gophers are playoff contenders. Are they eight? They are Penn now. They. Now? This is crazy. Yeah, they're the eight, like yeah, they are the eighth ranked team in the country now, and they're underdogs against Iowa. I yeah. hate that. I know that was crazy. That sounds like. I was happy about it. I was too. I think they should have been uh, even higher on the top ten. I think they should have been like six. Nah, I think eight's a good spot for them because Penn State was their best game. That that was their toughest game and best win to that point. So eight's a good spot for it. It gives them wiggle room to improve and, you know, if they lose, which now they're, they have two ranked ske- teams on their schedule. Right. So... Even if they do lose, I don't think they'll drop significantly as opposed to, like, 8th. They may drop to, like, 11th or something. But, yeah, Gophers are tearing it up. They're playing solid. Tanner Morgan's looking like one of the better quarterbacks in the country. And I'm not even, like, kidding. He's looking amazing, and he looked really good against Penn State. Defense made plays when they needed to. Like, the Gophers' offense has just been on a tear. Like, I think they're one of the, like, top-scoring teams in the Power 5 in terms of offensive production and all that stuff and, like, yardage and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Gophers are kicking ass. Speaking of another Minnesota Falcons, really quick, the uh, men's basketball team was in Sioux Falls on they were. Saturday. Yeah, they played that night. Iowa, they played right? Oklahoma. 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 Did, did we know the score of that game? Yeah, I... they lost. They got their ass. Oh. <laughs> Rough. Sad. Well, that's a big... I guess I thought it was a lot bit larger or larger. They still lost, 71 to 62. So. Oh, so it was probably like a late, late, like, Free throws towards the end, like when you foul. Well, and stuff. The, well, actually, they collapsed. <laughs> really? They were up 26 32 after one. So, uh-huh. and then they got outscored 45 to 30. Ooh, yeah, you'll lose basketball games that way. Yeah. When the other team scores more points than you. Yeah. Typically. That's, I mean, <laughs> I don't, I'm not, I was never good at math as a kid, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Man. 
But of course, that game got totally overshadowed because of you know LSU the Gophers got the dub. D- yes, LSU has clinched the playoff spot. Bama, Bama, roll tide. Bama lost. Bama, Bama. lost. Cousins wasn't Bama good enough. With. Bama double with. Oh, that was a good game. I watched the game. Uh, I actually thought Alabama had a chance to win them. I thought because they came back. Yeah, I know. Like, Al- yeah. At the very end. Yeah, I know. You knew Alabama was gonna have a, ch- a chance to come back and win that game. But to me, LSU just clinched the playoffs. But unless they have a disaster towards the end of the year, there's no way they miss the playoff. Even if they don't win the SEC, they're still in. Right. right. Well, Joe, Joe Burrow clinched a Heisman Trophy, in oh, my opinion, as well. I, I think so. I, he's Is it good. tank for Burrow now? It, it might be tank for tank Burrow. For, I mean, why do you think the Dolphins won? Think about it. True. And the crazy part is, is the, they want the Bengals to get to us so they can get Burrow. Exactly. <laughs> I think Joe Burrow's the safer pick, honestly. I think he's a better pure passer, a better pocket passer. Yeah, I think he's got. It. I think he's a little more accurate than Tua. I think Tua has a better arm, but I think he, Joe Burrow's a little more accurate, and I think he'd be the better NFL fit, in my opinion. Nice. But uh, yeah, LSU's in the po- in the playoff. They're gonna have a chance for a national title now. But Alabama was put fifth today, so they're not out of it, though. Right. It takes one slip up by Georgia to get in there. Sadly. Sadly, sadly. They'll always get the benefit of the doubt. But, I mean, it could be worse. It could be. Because there was a close game, and LSU dropped the ball in the third and fourth quarter. Whoa. Hello. Hold over. Look who the cat drove in. <laughs> Everybody, welcome Benjamin Olsen. The special guest of the week. Ben is back from uh, being on location in Green Bay. Perfect timing, Ben. Would you like to report on that? Alrighty. It was Oh, yeah? Even at a loss? They won. Oh, they did? Yeah, they won. It was a close game, but... Christian yeah. McCaffrey being stuff, stuffed at the oh, quarter yard just, line. Sorry, I thought they played the Chargers last week. I'm sorry. No. That would have been a good game. On the 18th play of the drive, Christian McCaffrey on the two-yard line could not punch it in. I was so disappointed. How about that crowd of electric on that? So good. It was snowing. It was, yeah. it was cold. So fun. I, I didn't realize... I didn't realize how big went home to the advantage until 78,000 people booed the Panthers when they came out of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that would do it for you. I wasn't, I, I, I didn't boo at all. I wasn't expecting it. It was like right. the whole crowd. Oh, man. I had the nine year back behind me saying he was going to bust her kneecaps. <laughs> That's man. amazing. He's like, I'll fucking decapitate Keith Cow Allen. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you're nine. <laughs> Go home. Shouldn't even be here. <laughs> oh. Get school tomorrow. Must be a dedicated <laughs> fan base. Oh, yeah. So much fun. Well, that's good. I, mean, I, was, I, was, at, I was at Lambeau Field from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I could have been there longer. Than that was fucking good. That's crazy. I got off of the jello shot at 10 a.m. Huh? Hey. It was green and yellow. Whoa. Yeah. Nice. That's taken. awesome. Just kidding. We don't, we don't condone, condone underage drinking. Yes, we, yeah. of course not. They don't know how old Ben is. He's 27. I'm 27. Yeah, he was at a Packers game. Yeah, the whole underage drinking was just tailgating in general, not yeah. towards Ben, because he's 27. Yeah. The tailgate was really cool, too. I walked on the tailgate for a while. Was there good food? Mm-hmm. Cheese skirts? It's a lot of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were, like, cheesy mashed potatoes and cheese curds. And... That, that sounds actually amazing. So all the food. A lot of cheese hats? Yeah, a lot of cheese hats. There's three Packers stores in the Lambeau Field. Jeez. The Vikings have like three or four of them. I bought a bunch of boxes. Nice. Nice. It wasn't that expensive though. Like they're ex- really? expensive to be like really expensive. Yeah. I bought like a like a hat, like a puff hat for uh-huh. like twelve bucks. Oh, like, so about, like, this lander was two dollars. Oh, oh, two dollars, huh? Yeah. I That's bought like a good. nice Nike pullover, it was like sixty bucks. Cool. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Go pack go. Wow, so fun. Stadium was so cool. Hall of Fame was amazing. The fireworks were cool. The snow was awesome. Yeah, it was definitely awesome. a game if you were going to go to a Packers game. That's a game that definitely go to. I'll just show you, I'll just show you um, pictures of where I was sitting. I was sitting on the 15, in row 15 on the 40-yard line. 
It's solid. Such good seats. Damn. I could hear Roger's cadence. Oh, wow. I was sitting. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, that was a very close game. Mm -hmm. Came down to the last second. Close. Yeah. It was, they had, it was, they had four downs and they had two extra tries because of uh, penalties. Mm -hmm. So they had six attempts to punch it in, but they could not do it. Did you think he, uh, on that last play, do you think he made it in? No. Or did the crowd react like he made it in, or do they think they stopped? There was a couple of times where there was plays, like, there was a penalty call against the Packers, and I'm like, oh, it's a replay. I'm like, yeah, I can see it. It's a penalty. Everybody else is booming on, but right. I don't, I honestly don't think he made it in. I think he was, it was close. He did. Yeah. I see, but yeah. he didn't make it in, and if, even if there was, there wasn't enough evidence to overturn the call. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. No, I was watching the game, and it was pretty blatant that he was a couple yards short. Yeah. yeah. It was a good game, though. I, I quite really enjoyed it. I quite... Isn't it cool though? Like, like you got to go, of course, when it's like snowing. Like that's just perfect yeah, Lambo, Lambo. vintage Lambo. Thirty degrees, the snow is coming down. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Aaron like, Rodgers is slinging it. Oh yeah, slinging it in the snow, doing his thing. Cool. That's awesome. Thirteen of the fifteen games this week were actually won by a touchdown or less. So that's awesome. Yeah. And most of them came down to the last <clears throat> drive. Yeah. yeah. One. It was crazy week. Uh. You breathed in like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, that controversy. Shit, but like, put put in Teddy Bridgewater? Question mark. I, yeah. I said that. But I, I think don't know. no, I you don't. don't. You don't. After his second game back, his like first. Well, I shouldn't say legit team because he played the Cardinals the first game he came back, but Atlanta's not much better. Atlanta's well, worse. That's true. well, you play, it's your division rival. You're always yeah. going to be close in the division. I mean, I think it was a good game. Because it makes Breeze realize that, like, sitting away that long was probably yeah. affecting him. Right. Because, you know, he's at that age where he has to play every week because mm -hmm. otherwise he's going to wear down. Well, it's also that the team got used to having Teddy Bridgewater instead yeah. of Drew Breeze. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't so. look. Everyone's like, oh, I, I wouldn't look at you. It's just, well, a, it's just a bad game. Because when I said he had a shit game, I guess I shouldn't say it. Because I, I don't think he threw well, no, an interception. He, well, no, but he, he did not and, have a good game, though. Yeah, he it was a bad game. He didn't throw any touch. It didn't actually throw a stat. So the first time in the um, Drew Brees, Sean Payton era where they didn't score 10 or more points. Really? Yeah. That actually doesn't surprise me. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the, yeah, <laughs> the scoring that Drew Brees can do. Yeah. Well. Something that surprised me, uh, the Jets won yeah. against the Giants. That was actually a really good matchup. Jamal Adams a shame no one's gonna played play himself up. Yeah. yeah. I actually heard the Giants one was really pissed off and they lost. Like, super pissed off. Enough to fire what's-his-face? I guess, I don't know, like, I heard he stormed into the locker room super pissed off and yelled at everybody. Huh? That's what I saw. Hey, oh, poor Daniel Jones. Think about it. The only two teams to lose to the Jets this year. Cowboys, the Giants. <laughs> Getting close. And, the NFC East killers. Yep. I think they could. I, 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 full, I fully expect them to. Yes, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, another game I was surprised by was... Uh, yeah, the Titans getting the win. Uh, the guy yeah. he jumped off side, so, so. Uh, that case should be a touchdown. Yeah. 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 We understand, man. Yeah. I just yeah. saw Marcus Mariota had a. He's been pretty solid for Tennessee. Marcus Mariota, you mean? Ryan, 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 sorry, Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill. I apologize, everyone. Yes, Ryan Tannehill. The better quarterback. Well, he probably is a better quarterback. I don't care what Brendan says about him. He still, he still wants to believe that Mariota can be, like, a solid... I'm like, no, Brendan. Marcus Mariota is not good. I mean, he can really I, yeah, he can be a great backup. Like, like that's Bortles? what he is. He's a backup. Like Bortles? Like a Blake Bortles? <laughs> oh, you think that's good, huh? I, was, I wouldn't say he's that good. No, no. We, he's still top... I think he could be a top tier backup. Is what I'm to say. Well, okay. here's the thing, though, is... I think if Mariota wants to do something really crazy to try to kind of, I'm not going to say fix his career, because, like, he could go the backup route, but what if he, like, actually did what, like, Tim Tebow should have done and, like, change positions? Change 
position. So. It would be like a wide receiver or running yeah. back or something. Well, because that's what Tannehill did the reverse coming out of college because Tannehill was a receiver in college. and then Like quarterback? Yeah, and he's a first round pick. Yeah. He's, he's been a solid QB. He hasn't been ter- like, I mean, god like, awful. Mariota's got the speed like to be a decent wide receiver. Right. Or maybe even like a deep threat tight end. Like you wouldn't obviously use him as a blocker because he hasn't got the size on him. I would, just, I would put him as just like a sneaky little running back. They're just a fun little yeah, running back. like Cordell Patterson almost. <laughs> Yeah. Also, I think he just, now I think Mar- he's a lot kind of like t- Teddy Bridgewater. Because Mar- or the Titans are, are not a good team, overall. Or they've had moments, but like, collectively, they don't have like, a like, lot yeah. of superstars. They're, they're, yeah. And you did Bridgewater in his career up before he's a backup. He's a player like uh, insanely yeah. amazing off the teams. But when he goes, he goes, Mariota could go under a veteran like Breeze. I don't know who. Don't know Lamar who Jackson. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. A veteran like Breeze, and if you get a good offense like the Saints, like Bridgewater watching like the perfect situation in the Saints. That's true. Honestly, good special team, good defense, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, good offensive weapons. He could be somebody like Teddy Bridgewater. You know, the crazy game. thing is, is, you know who he'd be perfect under? Who? Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I would mind. Actually, well, because think about it. Cause, we, don't, like, we don't really have a good backup. Our backup was Tim Boyle. Well, and that's the thing is, like, and he could learn a lot from Rodgers because Rodgers, you know, is, he's decently mobile. Like yeah, decent. He's like, he's not a runner. He's like a, he's like a scrambler. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he knows how to play football. He's, yeah, he's one he definitely guys. knows how to play. He definitely <laughs> knows how to play. Yeah. Uh, another matchup that surprised me, but not really. It was uh Mika Fitzpatrick destroying the uh, Rams. Holy shit, we gotta talk about Mika. Mika Fitzpatrick. He might be a top five defensive back. If hot he, take, he, defensive he, player well, of the year. Because, well, okay, I don't know if I put my hot take. I put him in the top three. I put him in the conversation for because sure. Because here's the thing is, he, he, granted, he has on a great stretch of games, but that's why I put it at right now. Stretch of games, you know? Like, at the end of the year, I want to see what his stats are finalized. Now, granted, what is it, three pick sixes in a row, like, games-wise? Like, that's insane. Yeah. I have never seen a safety turn around a team the way he has. Yeah. He's literally turned around that Pittsburgh uh, Steelers season. Like, yeah. not, like, all by himself, but he's, like, revamped that defense. He's brought some confidence in that defense, and that's why they are, like, winning football games. He wasn't that bad with him. No, he, no, he, no, he, he was, was really good. He was good, but I wouldn't, wouldn't, I wouldn't have put him, like, as a top five safety. I think he's in a better system. Than the Steelers. I think oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely. In his seven games with the Steelers, he's had 34 tackles, five interceptions, Two of them or three, three of them for three, returns. Um, two forced fumbles. Uh, one fumble recovery, and he's led the Pittsburgh Steelers five and two, with backup quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Next Troy Paul Molly. Ooh. 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 Conversation to have. Kind I of mean, plays just like Troy Paul Molly too. I mean. Similar. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. A little surprised. I don't know if I'm surprised, but I'm not too soon. Yeah. At this I'm point, a little bit just because season. he wasn't great, but like he was the Bucks somebody great. Yeah. So like, well, that's why. Yeah, I wasn't super surprised just because the Bucks suck. Yeah. They did get the win over Arizona. Arizona's lost three or four straight. Well, now. I actually read the reason he got cut was because he didn't. He didn't have hustle in that yeah, game. Yeah, Bruce oh. Arians didn't think he was trying on that. Yeah. And, and you know what? And for a Bruce Arians team, you're going to – like, that'll happen. That's – Bruce Arians demands excellence. Do you think he could go somewhere else and be better? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I, I think, think – he goes to the right system, he could be good. Uh, he could go to the Patriots, win a ring real quick. If you really want to. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, he will. Yeah, that was, yeah. Like, so I'm not surprised. It's interesting, but I'm not surprised. You yeah. know, I think that's the way that I took it. I mean, because, yeah. It was it really did. Now, I was surprised they didn't, like, at least, like, bend him for a little bit, and then, like, are you going to do it? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. We're kind of, like, at a weird point in the season to drop it from another team. That's what I was thinking, yeah. It's funny, because that cornerback class that they came in is actually really ass. Because he came in in the 2016 draft, yeah. 
Ramsey. And Jalen Ramsey was the first cornerback. Oh, it's amazing. Jalen Ramsey? He's good. But yeah, Eli he's Apple good. was picked right ahead of him. Eli I love Apple. Eli Apple. He's a saint now, right? Yeah. He is a saint. Yeah. He was a giant until he was super cancer. Hey. Hey. Odell was cancer, that's, that's, too. That's not what I'm saying. That's what his Okay, 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 called. okay. And then William Jackson and Artie Burns. Oh, boy. Oof, time. Was the first-round quarterbacks. That's a rough. That is, what a great class. Xavier Howard. Ooh, that's a big one. Next cornerback taken out of the first round. He's a good one. He's good. Yeah. Uh, real quick, the Bills, I don't know how they lost, but they lost. To the Browns, who are not playing well. Cleveland turning around their season? I don't think they can. No, no, I don't think they can, they can either. Did the Browns beat the Ravens a couple weeks ago? Uh, week three or something like that? Week four or something like that? I think, yeah. I think it's just a good game. Yeah, that's what I think it is. Like, I, th- I, I think Cleveland can win this Thursday, but I, I just think there's too much damage to be done. I know their schedule gets easier, but there's just a lot of room to make up. That where I just feel like with what six weeks left, they at their peak, I think they might be a sneak in. Wild cards. Which I, I don't mean, honestly, they even make I don't even card. think they even make the playoffs, to be honest. You think you look at teams like the Raiders and the Chiefs, whichever one is gonna take it. Right. I could well, see I either that, taking it at this point. Yeah, I think that's their biggest issue isn't so much they need to win games, they need the AFC West teams to start losing games. Right. Because it's such a close The Chargers season. are winning, well, the Broncos yeah. won their last one. Well, and not, uh, and yeah. not to mention you still need the Colts to hopefully just go your resets hurt a little longer. You need that team to falter. Oh, yeah, we should talk about that, too. Holy shit, what are you talking Yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah. I, yeah. Well, yeah, no, but Brian, I didn't expect no. anything less. Brian Horrier is an ass quarterback. Like, that's just crazy. That's the worst team. Hmm? The Colts? Yeah. I didn't buy. You know what? Don't Jacksonville. Jacksonville. I can seriously Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah, Nick Foles is probably going to be... It, Nick Foles will be making his return in that oh, game. Oh, yeah. we. I don't think we talked about that. It was sad when they said Artemis. Foles is their guy. Yeah. But oh, well. I said I didn't hate it because I remember talking about it a few weeks ago. I said, worst case scenario is you just cut He's... Foles or trade him in the offseason. Yeah, that's true. Let Minshew just learn the playbook just a little bit more. Yeah. You know? Or or if Nick Foles is really, really good, you can trade Gardner Minshew for assets and uh, yeah. to a team, and then Gardner Minshew can be his own guy on a on a better system, yeah. and exactly. all, all is well. All is well with the world. Gardner Minshew can still be Gardner Minshew. You know, and it would be amazing if he went to Where? The I, Minnesota Vikings? I was going to say them, but I was like, eh. If I was the Rams, I, I, if I was the Rams, I would trade for Gardner Minshew, like right now. Have Blake Bortles, Gardner Minshew, and uh, not nah, well. I would, I would, tra- <laughs> no. Why would you rid of Jared Goff? I'm done with Jared Goff. I've seen enough. I've seen well, enough. He's better than Mitch Trubisky, right? He is, but that doesn't make him good. That's true. Actually, speaking of quarterbacks that could replace Mitch Trubisky, because he's right. ass. The guy who's going to have a workout on Saturday. Taking Colin Kaepernick. I already told you, the Bears' new quarterback is going to be Andy Dalton. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so this workout is irrelevant for the Chicago Bears. I mean, I think I think Cap's going to actually get signed. He said he's stayed in football shape. He's been practicing. He's been Bozzi. in a flag football league. Bozzi's been in football shape for the last three years. Like yeah, he, he's been training like he's going to – return next week and be the starting quarterback. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be a starter necessarily, but I could see them some team signing him just to sign him. I think the NFL, because the NFL is the one that set up this workout. Yeah, so, well, see, and that's what I found out. I was actually on my way here and I heard that on the radio. So now that kind of makes me think, oh, okay, so maybe someone will sign him. Because before we were talking about it in our little group chat, I was kind of like, I don't think there's any way anybody signs him. But then I heard it was NFL, like, approved, like, it was set right. up by them. So I was like, okay, well, it seems that all the the ships are sailing on the, the past. I and... think that's what they're doing. They're just trying to get cap signed, put the water on the bridge, make everybody forget about what happened. Which I'm okay with, though. I really am. Like, move on from it. It happened. You know, it, the whole national anthem thing isn't even, like, I know some people still do it, but it's not talked oh. about anymore, like, like, if you yeah. want to give Colin Kaepernick a chance, I'm not going to refute it. 
I'm all about giving players second chances. It's not like Colin Kaepernick, like, you know, beat his wife or, like, murdered someone. Like, like we've seen players do way, way worse. And still play. And still play, exactly. Could like harder to cocaine. Eh, yeah, Chris. Was a uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Almost so, came an MVP on the Eagles. I mean, that's true. after all that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. And all Colin Kaepernick was just stand for something he believed. Well, didn't stand. Aha, aha, aha. He took a... Uh, uh... He took a knee for, he something, a knee he for something he believed in, which, I mean, this is America. You have the right to do that. And then he didn't even, like, just take the knee for publicity. He actually did has stuff. been doing things. That's what I mean. Yeah. So it's like he did it, and he knew he was going to risk his career. So if Colin Kaepernick wants to – not wants to, but, like, if someone wants to sign Colin Kaepernick and give him a chance, I'm all for it. I think he'll definitely be in the league before Antonio Brown again. Oh, for sure. So, Seems, I yeah. don't know. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know. We'll that's the close one. I think that's – well, here's the per- here's the thing then. Who would be the team to sign Colin Kaepernick? Well, I was gonna say I feel like the problem is is you're not gonna get like eighty percent of the NFC team. You're probably out of them already because of like the fan bases that seem to follow NFC teams are just kind of like really. I think it needs to be not to go political, but I think it needs to be more like. Well, that's what I'm trying to get. Level like, state, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I mean. It's because like you look at the NFC. I don't. The Broncos. Like, Dallas, Dallas, for sure, is going to be out on it. I mean, you look at just, like, the NFC East, like, I don't think Dallas would want it. No, uh, gosh, no. Like, Philadelphia probably wouldn't want to take on that kind of person just because of the Michael. I was saying, Washington would be a perfect place for Colin Kaepernick. Well, I don't want to see Colin Kaepernick. He definitely Kaepernick. wouldn't get booed his first game. I can promise you that. In the in Washington, D.C. But I think the hardest part of all this is – I'm worried Kaepernick's not going to want to come back because I'm willing to bet the very first thing that every single team that goes to that event, the first thing they're going to ask him in one-on-one interview type of things is, are you going to kneel? And if he says yes, they're dropping him. They're going mm-hmm. like, to drop him. See, yeah. but I don't see why that's a problem. No, I don't see it as a problem. It, it's but like, it's just it, they don't right. want that kind of publicity again. Because, like, I don't – like, if Kaepernick does come back, like, he did get a chance and he kneeled, since we went through this three years ago, like yeah. I don't care anymore. Like I really don't care if you want to sit. I don't kneel, even care then. You know? Yeah. I mean, like right. I, I agree. The the kids, right. Yeah. But I think, like Noah said, they don't want to pull this. Pull it, it, it's a yeah. lot of publicity for a backup quarterback. Yeah. Right. Because realistic, like I would love to see Colin Kaepernick get another shot to start, but realistically, he's a backup quarterback. No team wants that. Problem. No team wants yeah. their backup because of that. Exactly. Like, they only want their starters to have that much drama, let alone their backup. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Well, there could always be a team like the Cowboys who just tell him you're going to stand. But the Cowboys wouldn't want him because of what he did. You know? right. right. But like, they like, got Michael Bennett, and he was kneeling. But I was saying, He's been kneeling anyone, since it started. If could get him in line, then Jerry Jones would be the one who'd be like, no. See, and, and that's another reason why I'm hesitant, because it's like, yeah, he may be in football shape, and I put air quotes around football shape because, like, it's so different playing flag football than when you have 300-pound Aaron Donald trying to rip your head off. You know what I mean? Or, like, Khalil Mack or NFL pass rushers. Like, that's something that you just – that you do lose missing the league for three years, and he's 32. You know, he – because, like, I don't know if he ever suffered any major injuries, did he? Like, did he? I don't know if he did. I think he did, actually. Did yeah. he? Okay. Uh, was what was it? His leg or something? It was in the playoffs he got hurt. And he was, like, 2013. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He really hurt. RG3 took over, right? Yeah. No. no. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know he got hurt. I can find it again. But oh. at the same time, though, I remember watching one of the last games Colin Captain played. He was awful. Yeah. yeah, he, he was, was like, like he was like running, he like throw right to the defender. And the defender yeah, let, like, let's okay. yeah, that's a good point. Let's keep in mind that when he did play, like he wasn't good. Right. Like some, especially like his, his like obviously he was, when he was younger and when they, they went to the playoffs, he was good and like he was I don't know his recent like his most last span of games. Yeah. Awful. Post Jim Harbaugh, he's been awful. Awful. Like you wouldn't want him on as a backup. Awful. Right. It's one of those things, it's like the Johnny Manziel situation. Like, we want Johnny Manziel to, like, be great because he's so entertaining and he's he's an interest, he's a character, blah, blah, blah. But then it just won't amount to anything because they, they're awful. They are awful quarterbacks. I did find the injury. It was 2015. He had uh, 
was it injured? injured? No, he actually injured his his shoulder, oh. and it required surgery. Who oh, took over for him? Lane Gabbert. Lane. Actually, Lane Gabbert took his job week nine. And oh jeez. Had oh, surgery man. on his shoulder. That was. Crazy. I remember that Scott Irvin was like awful, and then Lane Gabbert came in and had like one good game. And was like Lane Gabbert. Yeah. Put a bit. Well, a team that had a great quarterback this week was uh, in a loss, the Cowboys, and also Kirk Cousins. Dastardly. He finally proved he can win with the He did. Yeah. yeah. And not only he three more out of him. Hey. I mean, I will say this. Kirk, the, it wasn't even just like Kirk like won the game because of something. No, Craig, Kirk had a really good game against Dallas. I will say his first touchdown was all Rudolph. Like, oh, that, that was a sick. That was a sick play. Like that was insane. That Rudolph got that in. But yeah. yeah, you know what my biggest surprise in that game was? What? I actually was our run defense. Like we shut Zeke down. Yeah, I yeah, think that had no him. chance. I said something like, "I want him under however many yards." And yeah, yeah I, they they did a good job of doing that. Yeah, they they shut him out, and then terribly on Oh, yeah. I, I, see, this is a good loss for Dallas because it exposes the one weakness on their football team, and that is coaching. Jason Garrett is a, not a good game manager. I think he's a bad head coach. And you can say like, oh, well, Kellen Moore's calling the plays. Yeah, but Jason Garrett can be like, um, Kellen, why are you, why are we running the ball and Dak Prescott? is just completing passes all over this gosh darn field. We are not running the football. We are going to keep passing it. Jason Garrett has that say because... Right. I laughed when I actually saw Kellen Moore because I was like, he was just in the league like two years ago. Oh, yeah, he was a was Boise like, guy. He was he's, he's the winningest QB in college football history. And I just laughed because I was like, holy shit. Because I recognized him when I saw it and I didn't hear his name. They're like, it was Kellen Moore. I was like, holy yeah. See, and he's actually a pretty good offensive uh, play caller. Yeah, from what I he did. just ha- he just had those bad couple plays, but I I also blame Jason Garrett because he easily could have been like, um, no, run a pass play. Yeah. Because you know what? I'm just gonna say it. You pay Dak Prescott forty mil. I think he's that. I think he's good. I think Dak Prescott's that good. And like, he's ha- like. It's crazy. Like you don't realize it, but Dak Prescott is having just as good a year as he's as he's been. He is second. He is second in passing yards, second in touchdown passes. Or I'm sorry, he's not second in passing yards, but he's like top five in passing yards. He's second in QBR, top ten in like passer rating and like pa- I think that that's what it's like passing yards and stuff. But he's like top ten in every major statistical category. He has a. He's never had a losing season. He has. Two is probably going to be three in division titles to his name. He, um, since entering the league, he has the third best QBR at a ninety-seven. Like, and we say like his one bad, his one bad year. He threw for nearly like third, like I think it was like thirty-four hundred yards. Had twenty-two touchdowns, which is top ten in the NFL. And he was still third in the NFL that year in QBR with a team that had dysfunction when Zeke Elliott was suspended on and off. So Dak Prescott, I think, is a really good quarterback. I've defended him since he came into the league. I've defended him when people are saying that you shouldn't pay him. I don't think Dak's the problem. I think that's Dak's team. I think once you get him a serviceable head coach, I think that Dallas team's going to be, like, legit. Like, I could pick him to win the Super Bowl, and I wouldn't feel bad about it. I think they've definitely already made some moves that help. I mean, Amari Cooper. Exactly. Fantastic addition. Oh, it's awesome boys. addition. And not to mention, I didn't mean to cut you off, but, like, okay. You know what's crazy, too? Like, since you're a Green Bay guy, it, Randall Cobb is one of those guys where it's like, holy crap, that's right, he's on the Dallas Cowboys. Every time he catches a pass, I'm like, I totally forgot he's on the Cowboys now. Yeah. The only problem, reason he wasn't on the Green Bay Packers is that he had the injury problem a couple of years with the Packers. Right. And then he came up and the Packers didn't want to pay him. Yeah. But for other players, but he's still a Oh, yeah, he's, an, solid awesome, he's an awesome number two guy. Yeah. Awesome number two. Really good slot receiver. And he gallows. Yeah, and yeah. Gal, Gal, and now you have Jason Witten back as your safety valve, which is awesome. Like, like this, like Dak Prescott can really lead this team, and I think honestly, from what I've seen after this year, I think Dak Prescott, if he keeps this up, can be a dark. I mean, I don't think he will, but I think he'd be like a dark horse MVP contender. And I think they're still going to win the division even after this loss. I think once you just get him a good, serviceable head coach. Like, this Dallas season be rolling. I think you pay Dak Prescott. I don't even think there's any debate about it anymore. I think you pay Dak Prescott, but I hate to burst your bubble, but Cowboys are 5-4. Yeah. 
they're barely over 500. Right, but, um, yeah, that's true. But, the fact that they'll probably still win the division, Philadelphia is just as dysfunctional. I wouldn't say Dallas is dysfunctional, because one of their four losses to Minnesota, the Packers, J-E-T, Jets, 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 a bad lot, a bad loss to the Jets, and then their other, what was their other loss? Uh, so much to look that up quick. But, Dak Prescott, um, against Green Bay, nearly led him to a comeback. Had a bad game against the Jets, I will give them that. But in the fact of the matter is, I think every team every year has, every good team, I should say, has a bad loss. Every team does. The Saints. The, and the, and the freaking Saints, in the Superdome. I remember, because I, I was actually watching that game. Like, that's a tough place to play. And Dak Prescott still put him in a, in a position to tie, like, I think it, because what was the final score? 10 12. 10 and 12. Yeah, because I remember, because Dak Prescott had a chance to lead him down the drive and win in the football game. Like, Dak Prescott has put him in those positions. And I think the defense hasn't been playing as good. I think they're, the thing with Dallas is, like, I don't know what they're going to get every week. I'm going to get weeks, like, against the Saints where they're going to keep them in ball games, but then I'm going to get weeks against Minnesota and the Jets where they're just not good. It forces Dak Prescott and the Cowboys offense be one dimensional because they have to play the because Dak's good, but having Zeke helps when you can be a two dimensional offense. But yeah. then again, I, I've seen Zach or I've seen Dak that he proved he can still lead a team. I saw it against Minnesota. I've seen it his first few years in the league. You know, Dak will always keep you in football games. Yeah, they're five and four, but I think that stems to a lot of other issues other than the quarterback position. And their losses have been other than the Jets have been to yeah. tough teams and tough places. CM Punk, Punk just uh, came on the WWE backstage. Oh. Punk's back with the WWE. Oh, but, oh, but can, can he can he please wrestle? I just want him to wrestle. But anyway, but yeah, Dak Prescott, you pay him forty mil. He's a great guy to lead a team. He's a great guy to build around. You know, every NFL team has a bad loss, and the fact is that like even Dallas losing this game, it doesn't really change anything in terms of them winning the division it really doesn't yeah it affects their seeding but like right now dallas is a team that can win a home playoff game but i think once they go out and get a head coach like lincoln riley or someone out like just because i think that's leading canada right now is lincoln riley out of oklahoma you get him or some other offensive guru at, at a head coach like dallas can easily be super bowl contenders next year like easily, like I wouldn't. I honestly might even pick Dallas if they can get a certain spot. Uh, no, I, I'm serious. That's a hot take that I don't like. Why? Why do you not like that hot take? I just don't think Dallas is that great. Well, yeah, because they don't have a good head coach. I don't think that and they have injuries to the offensive line. While I do think that Dak Prescott is a good quarterback, I don't think that that team is that fantastic. Well, not yeah, a, but, definitely not Super Bowl team. Well, yeah, not no, not this year. No, I'm saying, year. I'm saying next year. Yeah, I'm saying I still don't see them next year. I disagree. If they make the if they make the changes that they need to make, I think Dallas is a legit Super Bowl threat. If they can tweak up their defense a little bit, if they can, well, really off offensively, I don't really know what else they need to fix. Their offensive line is fine. They just need to stay healthy. That's their problem. So maybe get some depth at the offensive line. The biggest thing is just head coaching. Like, get a different head coach. Like, that's really all it comes down to. Because Dallas is 5-4, and four, but they easily could be, like, 7-3 and what be like seven and like three or, like, 7-2, and 8-2, and two, something like that. They easily could. Yeah. Well. And then all of a sudden, we're talking about Dallas being one of the top seeds in the NFC. If, if just some things went differently for Dallas. Like, like you said, bad play calling against Minnesota, they easily could have won that game. And things are different. And... Dallas is still leading the division, though. Right? That's what I'm saying. It doesn't derail anything by a game. By a game. But, yeah, but, but but is Philadelphia playing fantastic? Absolutely not. Well, but, but I guess that's my thing with that whole thing is I think Philadelphia has a better road to retooling to get to Super Bowl contention before Dallas does. Because realistically, you look at, like, their team, because their offensive line, like, if Dallas does have the best offensive line, which, like, I do when they're all healthy, like, Philadelphia right. is a top three offensive line. Like, they're... Oh, they really haven't been the last couple, they haven't been the last couple of years. I mean, last year was because of injury, yeah, but, like, but, Lane Johnson, I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen offensive lineman dip the way he has after having yeah, an awesome year. Like, their well, offensive like, line's good, but, like, they've, they they dipped from what the talent level yeah. could be. Yeah. 
Um, but I mean, I just think like if they were like if the Eagles were somehow to get Jalen Ramsey before he got traded, I think the Eagles instantly would have jumped up to easily yeah. taking that division. I think they yeah. would have just because realistically, you look at the Eagles one struggle and it's their secondary. Like that's what their struggles are. Yeah. And I think you can go into free agency this year. You can get a good cornerback. There's a lot of good cornerbacks on the market this year. Right. A lot. Um, you could draft a cornerback, obviously, or you could, like, Arizona's probably going to trade Patrick Peterson in the offseason, the way that their team's going. We yeah. don't need to get into that now. But I just think, don't get me wrong, I think Dallas is a good team. It's just one of those things where they don't have a sense of – mind where they're willing to pay to fix their holes because Jerry Jones is just that type of guy. Um, like, obviously, the coaching change is different, but why hasn't Dak been paid the $40 million yet? I mean, you know, like, Dak has earned it. He earned it, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'd say he, he at least earned his $30 million before this year started. I mean, he's earned his $40 million now, mm-hmm. you know, and then you do pay Dak $40 million. Then you come into cap issues because then you still got to pay Cooper, you got to pay a bunch of defensive guys, so then it makes it harder to fill those holes that they have. Right. You know, their offensive line's not going to be any. See, but then, but that's going to affect a Philadelphia team because they just gave Carson Wentz a fat contract, which, which is very true. So, very so true. then all whatever good defensive players Philadelphia has, like they're going to have to pay Fletcher Cox soon. Yeah, and you pay Fletcher Cox as much money as possible because Fletcher Cox is amazing. He's realistically the only good pass rusher you guys have right now. So, I mean, yeah, you can say Brandon Graham, but I don't think Brandon Graham has been performing the way everyone hoped. Right. Then you're going to have to pay all those guys. You're going to have to start paying that offensive line, too, because I know they have a couple guys on contract next year. Dallas still has all their offensive line locked up. The only problem with there is Dallas is they just can't stay healthy. That's their only issue. They still have one of the best running backs in football, who they already have. They signed him in. Yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah. They have the one offensive trio player that they got. Right. They have him locked up, you know, and – the only issue is, like, yeah, they may not be able to sign Amari Cooper, but, like, you can get receiver. If you have the quarterback, you know, you can get receivers, solid receivers that Diamond doesn't. I'm kind of hoping the Rams trade one of their good wide receivers to uh, for draft picks. Maybe Dallas can scoop them up. Maybe maybe Dallas can go in and get Brandon Cooks or Cooper Cup or a Josh Reynolds. Well, I guess even though, too, like, I can see the Giants being a sneaky good team next year. Like, uh, see, I, 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 I agree. Team. If Daniel Jones can continue to elevate, because he just basically needs an offensive line. Like well, a, he a decent offensive yeah, line. he needs a lot of stuff though. I well, think because like their tight end, they got Evan Ingram. Maybe you get a, rec- a better receiver, I guess. Because yeah, I, I yeah, it, it, yeah, that's true. I, I suppose they do have they this guy named Saquon Barkley. Barkley, but I don't think Dallas is going to do anything until they fix that defense, and that's gonna that's a work in progress. Like that's a couple years of work. Well, not to mention like. The, again, the guy I talked about last week, the old Dolphins player, like he had another sack last week. Puts him like eight and a half with Dallas. Um, I can't ever remember his name. Robert Quinn. Robert Quinn. Robert Quinn had mm-hmm. another sack. He has eight and a half sacks with Dallas in like seven games, I think. Yeah. Right, but yeah. uh, another guy that's hitting the free agency after this year, uh, Shaquille, what's his Shaquille face? Shaquille Barrett. Yeah, former Bronco who has balled out for the Buccaneers. He has, like, nine sacks on the yeah, season I think so the far. Bucks are going to try to resign. Oh, yeah, I think so, too. They'll definitely want to. They're going to offer him money. He's going to take it. So who the Bucks are paying right now? No one. They're not. They're, they, 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 they ain't going to pay Jameis. I can no, tell you that. They're going to give him They're going to give him money. They're going to try to go out and get free agents, and they're going to get try to draft. They're going to have a high draft pick. I'm going to say they do. Probably, like, six, seven. Yeah, probably gonna draft a QB in a in a very loaded QB class. Mm-hmm. Well, talking about quarterbacks, there are two great quarterbacks in the Monday night game. It was probably oh, the game of the year for sure. That's the Monday night football game we all deserved after putting up with shit like Pittsburgh Miami. <laughs> oh yeah, it was such a good game, down to the wire, overtime last second. They both had a chance to have the ball. In overtime, both of them punted in overtime. You don't hear that very often. It was just fantastic. Yeah. Gervani and Clowney had an amazing game. And then the McLaughlin guy, the yeah, drafted the more, kid. Yeah, I was like, whoa. Yeah, he did really freaking good. Just missed the 
<laughs> just missed the one where it mattered. That's yeah, all. Yeah. But well. I think that just came down to just the my thing with that game is like I don't think any less of San Francisco because I think San Francisco is like just proved more that they're a legit football team. Right. I think literally all that came, that game came down to is just who has a better quarterback, and the answer is Russell Wilson. Well, I also think it comes down to what defensive line. Well, offense, yeah, but but, yeah. but but San Francisco defense was just as good. They got a big interception on Russell Wilson in overtime. Mm-hmm. I think it came down to which QB is going to make the biggest plays, and we yeah. all know the answer. It's going to be Russell Wilson. Jimmy Garoppolo looked nervous in the game winning situation, mm-hmm. which I don't, I don't, I'm not going to like rip on him for it. I'm not going to say this is going to derail everything San Francisco is all about. Right. It was also his first ever. That was that, that that was that was really like the first one. Like even the drive, he did end up leading on a game tying drive, but it could have been so much more. Like he yeah. just looked nervous. He wasn't cool and collective. He was rushing his passes. They weren't precise pass. Like he just looked nervous. But that's what you expect from a guy who's just taking over the reins, and he's never been put in these situations. You know, me and Brenda were talking about it at work today. It's like you know, you get you put Jimmy Garoppolo in that situation a year or two from now, or heck, even like five weeks from now, it's going to be a lot different. Right. But I think that just literally came down to Russell Wilson being the MVP that he is right now and just making more plays than Jimmy Garoppolo. That's all it came down to. Both defenses were great. Russell Wilson had a great game beyond the stat line. The stat line doesn't oh, yeah. show it, but Russell yeah. Wilson had an amazing game. We can see that in not week 11, but the week after, that Sunday Night Football got changed. So um, did. Eagles, Seattle to Packers, Niners. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. I think is going to be a fantastic game. I think oh, it's, it's be the great. smart move there. Yeah. I think, uh, I think Seahawks, Eagles is not going to be nearly as good. I think Seahawks no. are going to win that. Um, yeah. But then you in a couple weeks down the line again, sometime here in December, I could easily see the 49ers Seahawks game. Their second game of the game being flexed to Sunday night football. I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised. Because that is going to be – that could be for the division if yeah. they can – if Seattle can win out and, and get the win. Because that would be 7-2, seven 7-2, and two, seven and, or whatever, and 2, and yeah. 2. Yeah. yeah. I will like say Seattle. one thing about last night, though. Um, you talk about Grapple being nervous, which – you know, he definitely was, but you also got to remember, he didn't have possibly the best tight end in the NFL. No, yeah, that's right. yeah. and then he, and then he lost um, Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders. Right, yeah. but it, in the defense, though, Russell Wilson also lost Tyler Lockett and um, who was their tight end? Um, not, on like their tight end. Right, but he still kind of touched it. Like he yeah. lost his, his starting tight end in that game. And he had Josh Gordon, who was there for only ten days, yeah. and he had, and he made a lot of huge catches. Like I said, I'm not. I, I say, I'm not taking away from Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Like oh I yeah, said, no, no. I'm just saying. Yeah, team. no. I'm just saying. Like in the defense, Russell Wilson had those issues too, and on the road, no but, less. But I guess it's like one of those things. It's like you look at like Brady's play when Gronk would play like back years ago when like when Gronk would play versus when Gronk wouldn't play. Like yeah. it's a total different dynamic. Like you take George Kittle out. Like I said, I mean, he's right. arguably the best receiving tight end in the league. Like he's, you know, he's when he plays, he's a good. Tight end. Yeah, no, but I def I did. I agree with that. I think if George Kittle's in there, that would have been an easy safety valve and all that good stuff. But eventually once you get to that level and Jimmy Garoppolo probably will get to that level. I yeah. think Jimmy Garoppolo is great. Yeah. But, but once you get to that level, you, it, it shouldn't matter who, like it does obviously, but like, Brady can make anyone work. Yeah. Russell Wilson made it work with what? Who was a, a, a wide receiver? He was like an undrafted rookie. I can't even think of his name. His name was like Morris or something. DJ Morris, I think. No, not DJ uh, Morris. Uh, Do you guys know what I'm talking about, though? It is a Moore. I know it starts with an M. Either, but like either way, he'd be irrelevant to any other team. But the fact that he has Russell Wilson is a reason he had like a huge catch yeah, in overtime. Right. About. I don't remember his name. But... Right. Like Russell Wilson makes it work. Yeah, right. That's just how that's just how he is. Well, Jimmy Garoppolo made it work with Debo Samuel. No, David Moore. David Moore. But that's he didn't have a catch. Then it wasn't him though. It was someone else then. He had Jacob Hollister as this one touchdown. When? Uh, I know this is kind of a little off tangent, but we're talking a little about receivers. Yeah. You did. Jimmy G did lose Emmanuel Sanders, who was had been their yeah no, and that's what I was saying too over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. But I mean, because I think that put his starting wide receiver as Pettis. <laughs> I think that was his starting uh, receiver. Debo Samuel. 
Russell's number two. Yeah. Number two. Okay. yeah. No, yeah. And, and I will say that, but I also think Russell Wilson, his receiver, his top threats got hurt too. So he was playing with a bunch of backup. He was playing yeah. with right. just a bunch of – and uh, Josh Gordon, who probably didn't even know the full playbook yet. I guarantee he didn't know the full playbook. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, you made some key third down catches. He did. And he if made... you were stoned, I don't know if you would have made. That's true. Harvin used to do it. So I guess that's true. that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But uh, I think one of the things that put San Francisco having a better chance at the game was that whatever you – the by Tart, the Bumble, I guess you call it. We got the ball out at like the one yard line. I think that's just because DK Metcalf, he could have stepped out of bounds at the two, but he was trying to get the touchdown when he didn't need to. I think that's just inexperience. And as he, I think it was inexperience. Rose, and when you think of DK Metcalf as a person, as the big physical, I'm I am a, a, I think I am the I am a big athlete. I can punch this in kind of guy. That, no. I mean, like, he, he is a big... I don't think I don't of him know. that way, I guess. I don't I mean, know. This is how he thinks of himself. Right. Right. I guess. As a rookie. I don't know. But I think with DK Metcalf, is he's so... Like, because DK Metcalf is a good athlete, but, like, I don't know. He's a bad route runner. I don't think... I don't, he's not a good route runner. He's just not. Yeah, he's quick, but he has to get a little momentum going. He's got a, a good set of hands, not a great set of hands. I, I don't think I don't think like DK Metcalf is a good receiver. But I, I don't think, think he's yeah. gonna, I don't think he's gonna. We're gonna look back in, in a few years and be like, wow, DK freaking Metcalf. Really? Uh, I don't think so. I think DK well, Metcalf's the next Randy Moss. I oh gosh no. I, Maybe yeah. I mean oh, in a few no. years. I do not think. So. I th- I don't. I think well, DK he's, needs he's to literally develop the, uh, the mold of Randy Moss. Like, like exactly. Maybe not as skill wise. No, because I was gonna say because Randy Moss is a better route runner. He easily had a better set of hands. And this is all just coming out of the league. Like Randy yeah. Moss coming out of the league was quick. He was agile. Yeah. He was a freak athlete. He had a good set of hands. He could literally catch anything that was thrown in his direction. I don't feel that way with DK Metcalf. I could I could trust Randy Moss to run any freaking route in the in the tree. I can't do that with DK Metcalf. Yeah. In my opinion, I should well, no, say. Well, no, definitely. Like I think. DK Metcalf. Like, DK Metcalf can be a top 15 receiver in the league, but he's not going to ever be part of the elites, mm-hmm. I don't think. I think he could. I, I think he has you know, he could be. He has a potential. I don't think he will, though. Well, especially with the quarter. But again, like, Russell Wilson can well, turn him into it. Ex- you know what? And that's just it, too. Russell Wilson will make him look good. And then it's going to come down to DK Metcalf. I want money. And then he doesn't yeah. get paid, goes somewhere else, and he's put back in his place. Yeah, he already has a pacifier, so. He's his mouth guard. Yeah. It's a pacifier. Really? I know. It's my favorite mouth guard in the league. I, I didn't know that. I had a pacifier in high school. I had like teeth on it. It was kind of cool. Diggs' um, best cleat game in the NFL. Yep. Yeah. His, his cleats were so awesome this week. He, he's always had awesome cleats. No, but I think this one was probably his best one. Don't go. Little biased, but I also felt they like pixelated the middle finger. Yeah, and stuff. Like, it was just awesome. so awesome. It was just so good. D- Stephon Diggs is great. Oh, uh, the people that actually designed his cleats also work with. Uh, WWE and I don't know if you know this, but Kofi Kingston has his own show on YouTube where he talks about shoes and Becky Lynch has custom Air Force Ones Ooh. that have the man and the little blood thing on them and they were made by the same people. So I think it was just a match made in heaven there. But that was a good game, but there's a lot of games. I think this could stand as a game of the year, though. Do you? Yeah, I think it can. Well, because look at before this week. Like, what was probably the best game? We won the, what do you call it, the Texans versus the Colts? Or somebody like that? Texans Saints was really good. We won. There we Um, go, Texans Saints. Oh, yeah, that was a really good game. Texans Saints. Texans Saints. Exactly, like Chiefs Colts. Uh, see, I was gonna say that one, but I was like, I don't no. know if I put that up that. No, like, I, I don't like to see like because that one doesn't stick out of my mind. Like Texan Saints does. This game sticks out in my mind, but there's no other game where I'm just like, you know. And, and same thing, with, I could say you know because I watched it Thursday night Ram Seahawks, but that was kind of just an ugly. I don't know. I, that wasn't a good game necessarily. I guess I right. watched it. But- was the Ravens Patriots game a really really good one? And not no. towards the end of the game. Well, that's the thing is like 
the reason why I feel like this last game can win game of the year is because, like, there was so many game-winning opportunities, like, yeah, different times right. where the team could have put it away. Well, but and the it's... defense would come up and just, like, the Russell Wilson uh, interception at, like, yeah. the three-yard line. Like, he had the man wide open. Right. But it, the a great the back play. came up and picked it off. Like, that was crazy. Yeah. And the thing is, too, is um, they were saying this yesterday on the on the broadcast. They're saying that this is the latest matchup. Like, uh, this is the best matchup of two teams in terms of winning percentage this late in the season ever. And it gave us one of the yeah. best games of probably the, what will be the best game of the year. Well, that's what happens when you put evenly matched up teams against each other. It's always like good. I know. I, no, yeah, I know. Yeah. That's what I'm sorry for Packers. Niners, Niners, Niners are going to kill the Packers, in my humble no, opinion. No, they're not going to kill them. True, that's going to be a big game. That's going to be yeah. chance for number one seed. Yeah, both teams are the top. They're one and two in the NFC right now. It's okay. Wins. Minnesota will win, so that will take them out. Minnesota will yeah. win the big game, in my humble opinion. But anyways, we got some hot takes coming up. That was a hot take. But, uh... Somebody put the Raiders winning the AFC West. I could definitely see that happening. I did. I didn't I, put that on. I, I put that Somebody. on there. I did it with a question mark, though. Like, you know, like, hey, I think they could do it. I would. Be, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I don't. I don't think like they will, but I will make a case for it. I wouldn't put that as a barn burner hot take. I put that as maybe like a, you got ramen on the stove level. Hot I love take. ramen. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right, but but it's so easy to say, like, oh, no, it's going to be Kansas City because they have Patrick well, Mahomes. You know what I mean? Even so yeah, much that, Patrick Mahomes didn't play. You look at the he's, outside you know, competition. He played, I guess he played good. He played good. He just doesn't have a defense. I mean, you look at the uh, the Chargers and the Browns. Like, I really don't see the Broncos and Chargers. No, they're, I don't, like, they're not Broncos. making it I just number one. I don't believe the Raiders are going to be consistent. Like, they, they, they've been playing good the last couple of games. Yeah, have you seen their schedule, though? No, not really. Hella easy. Is easy. It, well, like, look back, there were some games, like, oh, in the early season, they played like, the worst opponents, and it's like, wow, the game sucks. Yeah, it's but, but so bad. yeah, no, that's true, but, like, the, the season is such a, sh- like, a shaky roller coaster of a that's season. True. Like, the Raiders are, are a better team now than when they were on week one. You know what yeah, I mean? That's true. That's true. Like, they're just a better, they're a better football team. John Gruden has that, has that team with swagger again. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, it was crazy. It's been a weird off season. We saw him on hard knocks, Antonio Brown mess. We didn't know what direction they were going. And people are talking about the Raiders being a good team, which I think they are. Actually. Oh, I think they're, I think they're really, like, not really good. I think, I think they're a solid football team. They have probably the best, one, probably the best offensive rookie this year. Josh Jacobs? Josh Jacobs? I'm, try- I'm trying to, unless someone else is out there that I'm forgetting, please. I mean, I, mean, I put Well, I will say, here's the thing, here. Josh Jacobs is breaking all, like, the franchise rookie records, but their franchise rookie records aren't that great. No, but, like, no, but, no, Josh Jacobs is a beast, though. But, no, yeah, don't get me wrong. But, no, but I'm just trying to think, like, who other, uh, what other offensive rookie is tearing up the league like he is right now? Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe. I mean, you probably could make an art about Kyler Murray, because he's kind of, but he's has his up and downs. Yeah, but, like, because, but, because uh, I've seen a lot of good things, like, Josh Jacobs has been awesome. Like he's been running for like 120 plus yards. Yeah, which is he, like he's tearing it up in Oakland right now. And not to mention Derek Carr is playing with confidence. Right. That defense isn't great, but you know what? They make stops when they need to. They have that. Um. They also have a really awesome story. I mean, not really term, but like they have that awesome story with the, that safety Harris. Harris. Dwayne Harris. Yeah. Yeah. He's Harris. good. He's actually a really Great solid player. safety. Yeah. But um, I don't know. This team is just a bunch of castaways. They just seem to play for each other, and that goes a little. You know what the Raiders are? The Raiders are the human aspect of the football game. We all forget about sometimes. Yeah. We want to look at like these guys have all these superstar athletes. They right. have the all these numbers. Oakland just plays the human side of football, where it's like we play for each other. We are going to play for our head coach. We believe it in, and this Raiders team's rolling. They got Cincinnati and the Jets in the next couple weeks. Uh-huh. You know. Not, not to, I'm going to start off a little bit. I'm actually looking at this is a list of um, projected odds for offense work of the year this year. Okay. I'm trying to go is Josh Jacobs, Colin Murray, David Montgomery, Garner Minshew, Daniel Jones, Terry uh, McClough. McC- McC- Terry McClough, 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 yeah. Uh, Marquise Brown, DK Metcalf, Miles Sanders, William Haskins, and there's a yeah. Kate um, Yeah, like the only ones right now that are really sticking out in my mind are Kyler Murray and Josh Jacobs. And I think Josh Jacobs is more than Kyler Murray, in my yeah. opinion. I don't know, for some reason, 
Garrett Bradbury. I don't know if that's because he's good or not, but that's like okay, yeah. Garrett I don't Bradbury know. I don't, is know solid. I don't know if an offensive lineman can win a rookie of the year, but holy that shit. stuck out in my mind for some reason. Garrett it's Bradbury is good. He's the guy that the he's the Vikings Quentin Nelson that they needed. Yeah, if mm-hmm. if we had a better left yard, holy shit, huh? the Vikings offensive line would be really fucking good. Yeah. And that's why, and that's why, that's why they're, well, yeah, that's why they're playing better because Kirk Cousins has time to throw, and they have a running game, and that's why they're they're a better football team. Crazy how that yeah. works. I what? will say if I wish the Rams uh, would take Terry Joplin and Dwayne mm-hmm. Haskins keep on the same page though, because they were teammates in college. I mean, that's right, they were. Yeah, oh, forgot about that. I mean, that could be kind of a deadly duel for the second half of the season. Now, granted, I think this is I think maybe next way season. too early. Yeah, way I, too early for I Haskins. really like Terry McLaurin. Yeah, so do I. I, I think he's going to be a really good wide receiver. I think he is, too. Like, I think he's I'm be so better than he's like on the, one of the worst teams in the NFL. Right now. I think he is. It's the rate, I know he's not going to go anywhere, but I would love to see him on a different team. I, right. would, I wish we got drafted by somebody. On a team where he has a chance to shine. Yeah. Or not the... Who's better, Case Team or Dwayne Haskins? Yeah, right I there. think he's going to be better than DK Metcalf. In my oh, opinion. I think he is still. I just I like DK Metcalf. I, I guess I don't know. Yeah, no, there are things I like about DK, but like I don't look at him and be like, "Whoa, this guy's going to just be him. He's a top ten receiver." Blah blah blah. Like, oh, I don't but like, like that, he I literally has the mold to do it. though. No, like, and I like, told, I totally agree you know, with like, that. Route running is something you can improve on. I don't know it if is. It is, and that's I mean, I feel like there's so many holes in his game that he needs to improve. That players like Julio, Calvin, Randy Moss, uh, AJ Green, they didn't need to fix that stuff so much when they were coming yeah. out of college. So that was, that's the reason his draft stuff, though. I mean, like it's not like DK Metcalf was a first round pick. Like no, he wasn't, was but he got a lot of he. You know what? He got a lot of hype because of a picture he posted. Two point eight percent body fat. Don't get me wrong. Like, he's a genetic forty. Like he is a great athlete. I think. But, uh, I don't think I'm talking about him getting money. Terry, Mc, Terry McLaurin. McLaurin. Terry McLaurin. I think he could be someone. I don't think he's going to be like an Antonio Brown. Not, 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 like, no. What I like, I think he could be like a Tyreek Hill though. Like he's not like he he's can, legally, but he's he's fast and he's shifty and he yeah. is. Some weeks he's going to be the the fastest guy. Some weeks he's going to be the the one receiver in yards, and that's just going to. Yeah. He's he, will he get Pro Bowls? Sure, will he get All Pros? Probably. Yeah, but he'll, he'll he could be top five in receiving year after year, and I don't think anyone bat an eye about it. No. Real quick, we need everybody to vote for Gardner Minshew to make the Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl. Yes. Voting is Al-Bow-Bow. now open. How funny would it be if a back quarterback made the Pro Bowl? He deserves it. Oh, he the way he played. Uh, Kyle rookies, Allen, vote him as well. Are rookies eligible for the Pro Bowl? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, so when's he made it last year? He, okay, actually, I take all this back. We don't want Garner Minshew in the Pro Bowl. We want the Pro Bowl gone. Just remember, Mitch Trubisky is a Pro Bowl quarterback. Guys. That's true. It's a flawed system. Yeah, it, it really is. It's that's true. Like I can see here and Red Mitchell Trubisky, and I clearly he is listening because you know I saw how he is great. listening. He has to be. He has to be. He really does. So clearly, I'm getting in his head. So I want to remind you, Mitchell Trubisky, that you are an ass quarterback, and the Bears wasted. <laughs> Their future for you. I just want you to remember that. We do what have one you, listener in Chicago. Well, if you do want to come on the podcast, yeah, we will yeah. If you, do want, if you want, if you want, if you want to sell our differences, support small town podcast. Yeah, if you want to, yeah. he can be the Baker Mayfield to my Colin Cowherd. That's how it can be because they those two have <laughs> beef. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> we'll take him for free. True. No experience necessary. No. But, Ethan, you had a hot take in the basketball world. Yeah, we're finally switching sports. Yeah, well, yeah. for the rest of the day, well, besides pick So that's what I mean. So, yeah, we're going to start basketball off with a hot take. I, well, because this is like, I don't know if it's necessarily a hot take as much as an argument piece. It's a, it's, it's a, it's what you call it, your ramen noodle. It's, it's a, well, here's the thing. Is I take it as a hot take because of what I think of the topic. And the topic itself isn't necessarily a hot take. But is, it, is Blake Griffin overrated, overrated, underrated, or is he at his expectations? Overrated. I think he's underrated, underrated a little bit. But I I'd think say he's more greatly underrated. Now, granted, in the middle. his injuries his injuries hurt him a lot. Uh, <laughs> injuries hurt him a lot. But 
injuries do affect him at this point in his career because he's getting yeah. older and stuff. But I think when if Blake Griffin can play a full season healthy, um, I think he's a top five power forward in the league. I think he could probably make an argument for top three, especially because he worked on the shooting when he came to Detroit. Like, that was one of the biggest that, things he worked on. That's one thing I have given a lot of props for because before, to me, Blake Griffin was just a guy who got rebounds and dumped. Dumped, and yeah. That's all he was. He has improved his shooting. He has improved on his free throw shooting. So I will definitely give him that. But I just don't – when I look at Blake Griffin, he's not a guy that I can – that I can just sit there and be like, okay, I can, I need, I can trust Blake Griffin to lead me to, uh, lead me to, you know, whatever. I, I, I can't. Blake Griffin, give me the playoffs. It's, it's nothing else. Blake Griffin's gonna put up really good numbers, but nothing else. But, but that's my and, thing. And, and, and yes, obviously, if we're talking about just purely the skill of basketball, is he over and underrated? You're right. He's, if anything, I put him in like where he's at. I think he's fine where he's at. Maybe overrated's a little harsh, but I think that in terms of expectation, everyone hypes him up. I think he underperforms at that level. But in terms of how the like a player he actually is, I mean he still averages like what eighteen points a game, ten plus rebounds. I think he's close to like twenty. Twenty. Someone should check his stats for this year, please. Well, thank he, you. he or, only played one game. Well, okay, let's let's do let's do last year, I guess. Um, or even if he's doing like his career numbers, because like like he puts up good numbers. He's probably the best player is, on the Detroit Pistons. In his career, he averages twenty two points, nine rebounds, four and a half assists. It's fifty percent from the field goal. Yeah, thirty four point two percent from three point. And how? But how much of those has been improved over the last like three years, though? But that's the thing, well, which, which is a credit to him for sure. I don't know. I just view Blake Griffin as a guy who just puts up. I I don't know. I view him as a guy who just puts up really good numbers. But like, outside of that, it's just I, I don't really. Even like you look at the playoffs, he literally had. I don't think it was a broken. I can't remember what it was with the like. He literally casts his entire leg. To yeah, play no, he's a business. tough guy, and he gets hurt all the time. But the problem is, is sometimes he play. He dedicated. He's dedicated. Yes, I will never deny a guy for being dedicated, and hustling. But you can definitely tell that the injury is starting to affect him a little bit. It's affecting the way he plays. Last year was, I'm pretty sure, his first full year in Detroit. Like start to finish. Yeah. He averaged twenty five points. Um on an injured year though. He was hurt yeah. last year again. Um point seven steals. And then here's the thing. He averaged five and a half assists last year. Yeah. Like for a power forward, that's that's pretty decent for a yeah, power. For board. sure. Um and then seven and a half rebounds. But obviously you're playing next to Andre Drummond who can grab like twenty five boards a night. So right. you just gotta take that into somewhat account. Yeah. Um Shot seventy five percent from free throws, like you said. That's a he, huge. That's a huge jump. From in where his he was. career, he averages for free throws um, just under seventy percent. Right, which is not good. Yeah, like his second year in the league, he was fifty two percent from yeah. free throws. Yeah, and you know, it's like like I, I view Blake Griffin as the guy. I viewed him when he was at the Clippers, a guy who was just a highlight show and nothing beyond that. And the thing with Detroit is like I we haven't really seen a full season of him with Detroit, but it's been nothing but good things. He's improved his game the last couple of years, and, you know, if anything, I might change it to just he's he's good where he's at. What, wherever he's ranked now, I can – that's fine. Well, then here's, like, a more advanced stat. Um, if you take away, like, his one game he played, because he's made his debut last night or two nights ago. Or, yeah, last night against Timberwolves. Um, last year was his best e- – or second best effective field goal percentage in yeah. his career. Yeah. So I mean, it shows he's taking smarter shots. He's not just taking like more better, sh- like not just taking more shots. He's taking better right. shots. He's I think a lot of that too has to do with not having Chris Paul on your team. Oh, definitely. He hated Chris Paul. Oh, definitely. Like yeah. he didn't want to do anything that he said. Like that Clippers team was a mess. We just didn't really realize it. Yeah. And I think that's another reason why he's just playing better. He's just playing more relaxed. He's having more fun playing basketball. He has better. Not talent wise, but he has better teammates that he actually wants to play with. So I think that stuff makes it a lot easier too. Yeah. Oh, and last year he attempted seven three pointers a game on average, which by far is the most in his career. Because how, 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 how many? So what's his? Uh, what was it? What's his? Oh, his three point percent. Thirty six percent. So he's so making not great. But, right, but 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 for a that power was forward. well, yeah, but that was never Blake Griffin's strong suit coming out of college. It's not as strong suit coming into the NBA. Like it's still and, not. 
And that was in 75 games. It's not a full season. Well, that's but, right. I mean, it's not like skewed numbers. Where see, like, it, so what was his average make that necessary? Like huh? how many, how many, see, if he attempted seven per game on average, how many did he make? Two and a half. Two and a half. But he had like two shots, yeah. I don't know. And that, I think that's another thing that, st- that stops me Blake Griffin just a little bit is like, oh, Blake's great, but I'm just waiting for him to get hurt. I'm waiting for him to just do something that'll just derail his season, and then it's just that he's back to – his team's back to mediocrity. Because, like, Blake Griffin obviously makes you a better basketball team. He's never going to make you a finals contender by himself. And But then there's the injury bug again, and then your team is just – like, you're just – Meh. And then when he comes back, you're just stuck with this injury prone guy who puts up good numbers. Yeah. Obviously, we'll get further into this, like, because we'll revisit this once we do the power forward rank ums. Right. Spoiler alert for what we're doing next. True. No. Rank ums is back. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like, we can get more into this because once we actually look at the power forward, right. it'll help. That's me, and, I, and I'm going to be honest with everyone, I'm really bad at positions when it comes to basketball. Like, to me, I view basketball as just a positionless sport. It like, is anymore. It, it, right. So, like, if, if, you were, if I were to actually look at the power, like, and actually listed power forwards, I, I mean, I'm sure Blake Griffin probably is my top five. I just need to look at the actual positions. But, I don't know. Do I think Blake is, like, over, like, oh, he's so overrated? Probably not. But I don't feel view Blake Griffin as like this all elite, just yeah, world I star think, talent. I think he is. Like I think, like, like I think he, he I think he's a t- like he's a like realistically he's probably like a top twenty player in the NBA, yeah. realistically. But I don't know. It's just weird. I just when I think of Blake Griffin, I just don't think of like oh man, this guy is just an unstoppable force. Like you but, need to but really that's where, like I think he is. Like you look I at the don't. shooting part of it. Like since he improved his shooting, like. He can, like, you can't back off of him. I know. No, he has I. He's to hit it. But then he's, like, such a freak athlete. Like, even at his age, yeah. I know his durability is great, but, like, he literally can destroy you in the post. Like, he's so. Oh, yeah, crazy. without a doubt. But, like, but here's my thing, though. Like, when I say the names, like, James Harden, LeBron James, Steph Curry, you know, like, those are guys where yeah. you think offensively, like, oh, my God, like, we need to game plan for these guys, all that stuff. That's not really a guy I think when I think of Blake Griffin. I think of a really solid player who can put up good numbers if you if you're not careful. But I just don't think of Blake Griffin as like, wow, we need to just we need to just change our whole game plan, stop him, figure him out. We need to just throw everything away. We need to stop him, you know. Yeah. I think he definitely can do because, that. Because because correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't he have a pretty good game against Minnesota? Um, it was okay. It was Obviously, okay. Just, yeah, because he had 19 points. Okay. Um, Six assists, seven rebounds. So realistically, it's close to what his average is anyway. Realistically. Yeah. And yet the T-Wolves still won by, what, double digits, I'm pretty sure? Something like that? Or no, they didn't win by double digits. Yeah. That's but, a lie. But you also got to look at that game. Like, Derrick Rose didn't play good at all. Like, at all in that game. Yeah. No, and, yeah, and I'm saying there's other, obviously there's other aspects, but I just I just think that's what you Blake Griffin. You put up a great number, but he's not going to help you win all the time. Yeah, but, like, I don't think those are the numbers Blake Griffin's going to put up. I honestly think Blake... I honestly think Blake Griffin is what Kevin Love in Minnesota, like Minnesota Kevin Love, I think he can be that type of player. Yeah. I really do. If he's not already. Like, I thought the same thing about Kevin Love. I thought of a guy who put up amazing numbers and he was good. But, like, he's just, he's not ever going to be the number one guy who's going to lead you to anything. And don't get me wrong. Like, I love Kevin Love. I lo- he's, one of my, he's my favorite T-Wolves player growing up. But, like, I just wasn't like, whoa, Kevin Love. Like, I don't know. It, 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 Kevin Love. Are Kevin Love and Kevin Hart related in Same some distant way? Same what? person, it's just a man. Oh. Okay, and okay, okay. Just a little bit of a height well, difference. Well, Love, Hart, it's the same thing, basically. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to move on from the hot take? And yeah. And it later. We'll put a pin in it. All right. Put a pin uh, in it. But really quick, other basketball news, Steph Curry might miss the rest of the year. I, I, they they, I, I hear no, they, they said conflicting he's, reports. I, I, I heard that he, they said there's really not a chance that he comes back this year. I heard he wants to come back at the end of here's, the season here's the thing. to come and back. I think he honestly was going to, I think he's going to be healed in like two and a half months. But it's the fact that Warriors want to tank. They don't want to bring him back. Right. No, I, I literally think, like he'll be back in time. But I think the Lakers, or the Lakers, excuse me, the Warriors are just going to be like, no, please, just sit yeah. out. Because why? There's yeah. no point. I don't think Curry will 
be okay with that, though. No, he won't take it lightly, but I think it's like, okay, Steph, here's the Grandmaster plan. Because Steph Curry will be the one to understand that stuff. Yeah. Right. Steph Curry's all about winning. Right. So if you're just like, Steph, if you just suck it up, swallow your pride. Next year will be better. Next year's going to be awesome. We're going to be title favorites. Yeah, Clay, Clay back. Clay's going to be back. Everyone's yeah. going to – we're going we're gonna to trade D'Angelo Russell for assets. We're going to get it in the draft because we're going to get a good – we're going to get Robert Co- – right. Something like that. Minnesota. And, and then they're going to do really good in the lottery and get more depth on the bench and, and a really solid rookie. And then they're going to sign Giannis or some other big name free agent, and they'll be fine. So, yeah. yeah boom. So we're back with Rankin this week after yeah. a long hiatus. And then some people are doing the NBA player and doing center. Yeah, so uh, with centers, it's a little easier than some of the other positions to choose which players are which, but it is. Still, it's kind of controversial. Well, it's, it's hard anyways, but yeah, centers are probably the easiest to rank. Yeah. Easiest? Oh, yeah, definitely. The is the best what center. we did, and this is what we did, is what their natural position is on the floor. Right. I took their, as their official whatever, as when they start, is what I took. What Yeah, what they're starting would be. Yeah. For instance, Cat can play the center and power forward, but most of the time he runs as their center. Right. Like this Therefore, one... he will end. There's no repeats. Right. Like, we ran into this thing with Anthony Davis. We could have put him as a center. But, but he but said he's, he's not, not going to play center for the Lakers. So, isn't he for the forward. That's oh. what he lines up as. Yeah. So, it, it's I confusing would, sometimes, but... I think coming up next week, power forwards or whatever. You're... We'll probably do power forwards. We'll probably just go down the height tier. We'll, we'll find <laughs> out. But uh, like let's get started. So uh, right. if you listen to our archives. Shit, no, we forgot somebody on our list. What? Boban Marjanovic. Okay, put him in. Seven foot three beast out of Serbia. Okay. But uh, I'm so glad. So we were it's going. We were going down, and so we. Changed it a little bit instead of having four categories, we have five, and we don't have A, B, C, D, F, whatever. We have the best, the top of the line, yeah. great players above average. We have good players, we have meh, okay players, and we have bad players. And then if they're really, really bad, then they're horrible players. So, yeah. Like I said, like Doug has said, it's back with Rankums, finally. A little bit different this time, though. And you'll see a lot more skewed numbers than the last time. Or I guess you won't see the numbers, but, you know. So, uh, you only want to start the best? No, let's build up. Okay, so the worst ones, according to this, oh my god, give me, get ready for me to butcher some names. How about Kelly, Ben's taking the lead? Kelly Olenek. Hey, there you go. You got it. Um, Marcin Go- Go- Gortat. Gortat. <laughs> Gortat. <laughs> not in the league anymore, but we put him on here because there's a chance. Um, some teams so Alex, active. Alex Len. Yes. I knew that yes. one. Um, is that all of them in the bottom category? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know who any of those people are. Uh, they all play basketball. They're all fairly tall. Um, yes. They're all centers. They're all centers. Kelly Olin Nick looks like a girl at one point in this. Ah, uh, he did. He Anyways, <laughs> next we got our okay category. So is your eight player like you probably want them on your team, but like they're like the worst. Oh, you want them on your team, but you don't necessarily. No, these are the guys that they got the big contract during the summer of the big men, and you're kind of stuck with them. So you're right. like, eh, I might as well play you because first eh, up. We got Jusef Nurvik. Nurkic. Jusef, Jusef, However you say Jusef Nurkic. He needs a better name. He's yeah. so underrated. Gosh. I can't believe... He, I know he came off of a really brutal injury, but he is one of the best rebounds. Well, no, that's my only thing stopping. He's been hurt the last couple of years. Is he hurt again this year? Well, yeah. he's recovering from... Like, he, like, broke his leg. He, like, no, I, his no leg. I'm aware, but, like... That's I, what I, mean, is he's, I think he's still recovering from that. Yeah, so the reason I put him in a four is because I just I don't know what I'm going to get with a full, healthy Nurkic. And it's probably going to be fine. Maybe. Next we have Ivica Zubak. Is that close? Yeah, that was Ivac Zubak. 
Hey, Avika Zubak. Avika Zubak, everybody. <laughs> I, I thought that was a tad low. I mean, 3.4 is about where he's at, but I gave a 3. I think he's really good for the Clippers. Then we got Kyle O'Quinn. I think that's where he belongs. Again, I thought he was out of the league. But, I mean, he was good with the Knicks a couple of years ago. Like, really good. Oh, this is his name, Tristan Thompson. Yes. I thought that he was kind of low because of pure center aspects. He's one of the best pure centers. Like, he can't do anything besides grab rebounds and block shots. Right. But that's about it. And dunk. He got a three for me because he's uh, he was with one of the Kardashians. I was like, but he dated a Kardashian. I was like, before. <laughs> like, did he marry a Kardashian? I think so. Yeah. Hey, a kid with a Kardashian? That's what I'm saying. He's already, he's already doing good. Next we have... Um, yeah, nice, nice. I like him as a player. I just think he's I was not fantastic. The Kings. I thought he was going to be really cool. Uh, then we have Demontis Sabonis. Sabonis. <laughs> You're all sleeping on him. Uh, he's one of the best starting bigs in the league. How do you play on the Pacers? There was actually talks that the Pel- uh, the Pacers were going to trade him because they couldn't get a contract. Oh, yeah. uh, dude, he was. We just talked about him a couple weeks ago because oh, yeah. he got a contract extension. Yes. Then we got uh, Jacob. Po- Jacob. What? Jacob. Is that oh. actually how you say his first name? Jacob. Jacob Potal. Okay. Okay, Jacob. Okay. Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Um, then we got Thomas Bryant. That was he's in. He's in. Uh, Cody Zeller, I knew that one. White boy. Uh, Dwayne, D- is it Dwayne DeMond? Deadman. Deadman. Deadman, okay. Okay. So those are all the, if, who was the Bulls player we were just talking about? My no guarders. My no guarders, he got Yeah. Or He's in the next one. All right, oh, next we good. go. These plays are good. Definitely your starters for the most part. Uh, we'll start off with Al Horford. Yeah, uh, yeah. he's really good. Um, I think that might be a little too low, but I think with the 76ers, it kind of hurts his value just a little bit. Right. Yeah, then we got Brooke Lopez. I think he might be a little too low, I guess. I mean, I, I still realize. think he's good. We have... This just gets back into the position debate, because technically we have another 76 around here, obviously. Right. So oh, technically, wow. one of them has to line up at a power forward, but I, this is actually a good point to clarify this. Al Horford is a true center. Yep. So is the other 76er player, Embiid. Not right. why I was trying to make it a secret. I was going to say, I mean, You don't know who this is. You I, was like, I, mean, I, I get what you're trying to do, but but yeah, know. They're both true centers. Right. And that's that's why Al Horford and Embiid are on here. The true centers. Neither of them are true power forwards. But one of them will line up as Pow for me. The next one is um Pow. Is is Pow? Is Pow. Is Pow. Pow. I think just because of his age, um it yeah, kinda he, hurts his value. He's at the bottom of our okay tier or our good tier. No, excuse me, good okay, good tier. I gave him a four because he's just he's getting too old. He uh, to I gave him a three because you can see he's still a serviceable player, but I was debating putting him in a four. I mean great career, great. Oh, without, without a doubt, probably a Hall of Famer. Next, we got uh, Dwight Howard. D12. The only reason... Oh, you, 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 you ship one. Oh, he's he's 2.3, so that he's just going... Oh, is he? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, but Al Horford was... Yeah, Al Horford was a white, too. Oh, okay. So, yeah, DeAndre Ayton. Yeah. 25 um, games. Um, I think he should be higher. Uh, a little bit. Too young. I don't know what I'm getting at with DeAndre Ayton. Definitely potential to be a good center. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. But with rookies and young players, I'm kind of just like, I'm not going to go crazy on them. I do think, I ranked them with basically, like, I, I gave Ayton a three for now, but that has the potential to go up, obviously. Next we got Hassan Whiteside. This kind of threw me off when I saw that he was just in this category. I don't know why. I just thought of him as better. I gave him a 1.9. I see that. Here's my thing. Son Whiteside, when he's in the right system... He, he used to play for the Heat. Yeah, and that's the thing. is, 
again, this kind of just goes on the Tristan Thompson aspect. Like, right. as a pure center, Son of the White Side is freaking amazing. Because yeah. he's, I think he's seven foot. I think he's got like a seven five, seven six reach, like or arm length, you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean that's great for a center. I mean he's tall. I mean he grabs boards. I mean he blocks shots. I mean he's a perfect defensive guy, and you know that's what you really want in a true center. Yeah, he's just definitely not evolving with that's the NBA that. That that that's why I put him as low as he is because in terms of what the NBA center is now, he's not that great. But again, if we're talking about what center is supposed to do, which is what Dwight Howard's doing, which is what um, Jared Allen's doing, yeah. block shots, get rebounds, play defense. Hassan White is pretty good at it. I mean, I definitely think he, in his stand right now in Portland, he's definitely been better in his first couple years with the Heat than he is with his last and so far with Portland. Um, I think he gets in a lot of foul trouble. That's my yeah. also big concern with them because so, he's that's why he's, he's always limited on his playing time anyway because of it. So that's my big thing with Hassan White. His play has definitely regressed from his first couple years in the league. Uh, next we got former 24-7, 7-11, uh, European <laughs> Wimbledon champion of the world, Ennis Cantor. Ennis Cantor. For some reason, no. I just, I've never been able to like Ennis Cantor. I don't know why. I love he's Ennis Cantor. He's a cocky guy, honestly. He really, I think that's my problem. Is he's cocky, but he's not, and that's the thing, he's, he's not good enough to back up being cocky. Oh, I disagree. Well, okay. He's good enough, he's, I think. He's cocky. Like he's a he's a really good center. Like that. Yeah. Like that. Honestly, to me, is going to be one of the most underrated signings of the NBA offseason. Him going to the Boston Celtics because I just like Ennis Cantor is great. He can put up points if he needs to. Like obviously he's not going to oh, give me thirty, but he can put up like fifteen plus if he needs to. He's going to play great defense. He's going to give you everything you need from the center position and then a little bit extra. You know he's going to hustle. You know he's going to give you everything you that you need out of him. So I really like Ennis Cantor. Yeah, but, but that's the thing is like, yeah, I but, I thought, also. but I thought New York, he didn't show that. Like, he Oh, I disagree. I thought, no, I disagree. He didn't want to play for him. Well, yeah, but, who, but it's the Knicks. The Knicks are awful. He won yeah, a championship but, in New yeah, York. Yeah, but that's a horrible way to go about things. I'm not going to play well, yeah, for but no. suck. So I'm just going to stop. Yeah, but th- that's, <laughs> but, right, but how that's many other, how many other but superstars that's, are that's doing the that? E- but that's the ego part of it. Like, well, yeah, and the best. He's not, in my opinion. I don't even I don't know. put him in my top five. No, I probably don't put him in my top five. I definitely put him in my top ten easily. That's like, easy. That's, but that's the thing is, like, his ego is – like, he does not have the stats to back up his ego. I don't think he does. Yeah, I can under, I can understand that, but, like, God, I, I would, I'd be pissed, too, if I played for the New York yeah. Knicks. And no but, other player can yeah, say but that. that but that's no, 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 I, no, and I get what you're saying, but, like, the Knicks are a different level of bad. Like, what, not only are they yeah. bad on the court, they make things so cancerous to even be in the franchise. But, but that's the thing is, like, New York was a perfect place for him to literally ball out, like, put up, like, 24 and 18. He just didn't rebounds, try. You know? Yeah, and, and I totally, was, and I totally. not trying, it was boring. For, for a player of his caliber, in my opinion. Well, see, I thought he put up good numbers in New York, in my opinion. But he he's put still... up good numbers, but I'm saying he could have put up monster numbers because oh, nobody sure. else was on that team with him. Right, but, cause, but then who would he play for last year? Well, he played for – he got drafted by the Jazz, then he went to Oklahoma, and then he went to New York. Right, then... because he was really good in OKC. Yeah. Really good and in Steven, OKC. And then Stephen Adams. Yeah, Stephen Adams is a beast. We'll get to him in a minute. And then I think he's doing great so far for the Celtics. He's doing what they need him to do, and you can tell he's having more fun playing basketball because he actually plays for a title contender. My pick to get to the NBA Finals, Ooh. if you listen to past episodes. He was on the Blazers last year. Sure, it's the archive. That, that's what he, yep, he played for the Blazers. Like, I knew he didn't play for the Knicks, but he was a really key a component for the Blazers getting to the Western Conference. Like a huge key component for the Blazers getting to the Western Conference Finals. Next, so. you got Derek Favors. Hmm? I thought he was a little high from when I thought you guys were right <laughs> I mean, like, don't get me wrong, Derek Favors is a serviceable guy, but, you know. I wouldn't put him in a one. I thought two was appropriate. Then we run down here. We got Mr. DeMarcus Cousins. Okay, and we talked about this before we started recording. This is a DeMarcus Cousins of what you expect right. from him. Now, obviously not what you're getting this year, you know, type of deal because that was per dump of year. It's been that the last like three years. All right. But with a healthy Demarcus Cousins, you're gonna get a great offensive presence and a guy who's just gonna be a beast on the boards. And he's a good 
which he's a pretty good shot. Yeah, too. that's the thing is I think he's one of the mold players of like the new center. Like he can, right. shoot, he can grab boards, he's physical type of deal. Mm-hmm. I would agree. Yeah. Oh, this next guy I think is a little low on the list. DeAndre Jordan. Yeah. DeAndre, Gord- DeAndre Jordan will always get forgotten about because he plays he played for the Lob City Laker Lakers Clippers and he's gonna play for Brooklyn who has Kyrie and Katie. But yeah. Johnny Jordan is solid, probably a top ten center in basketball. Again, he fits the perfect yeah. or, or the center. One um, one thing I don't know what he's done in the last. I, I know he's been improving on his like free throw percentage, his mid range J. I don't know how he is on his three point shot. It's probably still no, probably. it's still probably still bad. He actually does hold the record for the highest field goal percentage in NBA history. Yeah, right. that's what I mean. Like he's been improving on his jump shots and improving on free. Like he's done. He kind of like Blake Griffin. He saw what he needed to work yeah. on, worked on Hashtag it. Hashtag Chris Paul. Okay. Hashtag <laughs> Chris Paul is a jerk. Hope, hope you're listening, Chris Paul. Chris Paul's overrated. Oh, 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 I would agree. Oh, hope you're li- again. Oh, mistakes. Shout out to Chris Paul. That's that. That's gonna be the eye catcher for this episode. Chris Paul is overrated. It really is. So, I, I would agree. The next one is Jonas Valanciunas. No, it's Valanciunas. Oh, Valanciunas. Valanciunas. I've heard some weird pronunciations. But... Raptor at one point. Yep, he was. He was a part of the Marcus Aldridge. He was, yeah. So he basically won Toronto a title. Yep. Basically. basically. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, he's actually week. been balling out for Memphis, too. Like, he has. He's, he's, been, he's been pretty solid. Yeah. Next we have Wendell Carter Jr. I think he's a little, little high, little high, high just because of how young he well, is. Well, that's the thing. He's, just, he's kind of right on the border. He's at 3.08, so he's kind of right on the border. Oh, yeah. Are, See, and that's fair. Okay. Like, yeah. He gets into foul trouble a lot because he's yeah. obviously young mm-hmm. and he's really lengthy, so it gets him. He gets yeah. in contact a lot. True. A little skewed by the Bulls fan. That's why. Uh, yeah. What is the cutoff between okay and good? Is it what is it? Three point something. Three point. I think it's three, three point zero eight. Because because wouldn't it be one two? You'd have to be three or better to be in. I think it's three point two or something. Oh okay. Analytics, folks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who's next? Next we have Bam, Bam. Abayo. Bam Adebayo. You know, I actually didn't learn this until last week. Bam is not his first real name. I know it sounds dumb in your head, but like for basketball names, like I could see somebody being named Bam. What's his first name? It's weird. I can look it it's up. It's probably saying weird, like, Jermaine or something. Well, it's kind, like long kind of like else. Dak Prescott's real name isn't Dak. It's, it's, it's Ed Reese. Oh, E-D-R-I-C. Ed Reese Femi Bam Adebayo. Oh, so Bam is in there. It's his well, middle it's name. Bam. Right. In quotes. Like, it's oh, okay, okay. Quotes. So he's not. It's Ed Reese Femi Adebayo. It's his name. We'll just go with Bam. It's easier that way. Bam. Bam out of bio. Next up, we have Bobby Portis. Yeah. I remember when he punched Nicola. Uh, I think he his face. The, when they were on the Bulls, and he punched his teammate in the face. I remember. Nicole Mirate broke his jaw. That was... That's basically all I remember of Bobby Portis. But he's actually a solid basketball player. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next, we got JaVale McGee. He's kind of a funny player, but he's actually a really solid player. He well, was underrated. Like, he's on the Lakers now, right? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah he was good. on the Warriors, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was really good for the Warriors, and he's doing really well for the Lakers. So, yeah. good for JaVale, who's he has good recovery after being on Shaft and the Fool more than anybody ever. Yeah, it was a once upon a time he was out of the league. It's kind of sad. Next we have Michael Robinson. Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson. The Mitchell Robinson, Knicks. The one bright the spot Knicks. on the Knicks. Outside of RJ uh RJ Barrett. <laughs> Love RJ Barrett. But uh yeah. Next we got Kavon Looney. I think Kavon Looney's great. He's the only good bench player on that team. Love Kavon I don't know. Looney. I, I think the the Warriors have just kind of gone through so many big you know, in the last like three years because obviously that's the one position that they need to keep changing. I mean, with Kevon Looney, he's even. been there. He just hasn't been. Yeah, well, because like Kevon Looney, I remember like during their first initial run against Cleveland, like he wasn't even a part of that team really. 
Right. Um, but he I mean, definitely, like I said, I mean, it's just kind of the rotation thing where he was kind of the next man up. And, yeah. yeah. And then our last one of this category is Dwight Powell. Bo Bomb would probably go in this one. Bo Bomb would also saying. probably be in this category, but we didn't rank, rank him in time. Yeah. I guess he's not that important. I don't know. He's a pretty cool guy. But do you know who is important? The people in our best category. That's true. We are We're not there, the though, yet. We're, we're great. great. A oh, we're great. All right, we're going to shoot great. We're going to shot fire so, a couple of these real quick. All right. Clint okay. Capella. Don't know Clint who that is. Boom. Andre Drummond. You don't Boom. know who Clint Capella is? No idea. You don't know who Andre Drummond is? Oh, my is? God. I know who Andre Drummond Rockets, is. Rockets, Clint Capella. What? I love Clint uh, Capella. I, 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 he's good defensively, but I need to. Two K. He's always be on my team. I think, okay, I think he's overpaid. Okay. See, I think there's a difference. Yeah, I do. I think I think he's a little overpaid, but at the time it was justified because yeah. the Rockets would have lost every key defensive piece that they had, so they needed to give Clint Capella because yeah. he's that important defensively. I do know who Andre Drummond is. Uh, Andre Andre Drummond is an example of like. You know, we talk about the model NBA center. Andre Drummond is not that, but when you can get 20 rebounds, like, it's fucking nothing. It's, yeah, it's weird. Like, well, and, and a lot of that is offensive rebounds. He creates second-chance opportunities. Yeah. It's actually crazy. I, I was looking at a stat. I think, like, he averages, like, 10, like, because he averages, like, nearly 20 points or something like that. I think he averages, like, 8 second-chance points, 8, 10 second-chance yeah. points. I believe it. Like, that, and that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Who's your boyfriend? The Detroit Pistons. Uh, next we have Rudy Gobert. I think Rudy Gobert needs, needs to be in the next category. Here's the thing: the reason I ranked him so low is because he is he's probably the best defender in the NBA, like hands probably. down, best, best rim protector, hands down. But the problem is he is like he. Is kind of like Joe Kim Noah when he was during the MVP years of Joe Kim Noah's career, I guess. Like he just cannot do anything on offense. Like he's not an offensive player at all. Well, no. At least from what I watch from him, like I just he just now green. Obviously, it doesn't help that he's got my Conley and Spider. Like, but I mean, it was sad last year when he like he broke down last year when he didn't make the All Star team. But it's because the NBA doesn't want defensive players. In the you know all star game, right? Yeah, but obviously, if we're looking at the aspect of basketball, Rudy Gobert is a top center, top oh, five yeah. center in the league. Oh, like yeah. I get it, like you don't want to, but when you're a, a contender year after year for defensive player of the year, you're doing something right. Oh yeah, definitely. It's just he just he is almost the exact opposite of the modern mold. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but has anyone back to back defense player of the year? No, because I think Draymond won it. Um, <sighs> Two years ago. But Rudy Gobert won it last year, didn't he? I thought he did. Who won it last year? Cause, like, cause well, because every year it's either Draymond, Kawhi, or Rudy Gobert. Right. I know it wasn't Kawhi. Well, uh, Gobert missed our cutoff line for being in the best category by point zero six. Oh. So. Which, really like close. I said, like, the reason I just had a ring fall is because he just does not bring offense to right. the team. Um, but like I said, greatest defensive player in the league. Like it's insane. Next we have Nikola. Oh, he Vucevic. did win back to back player. Sorry. Good job, no. He did. Oh, wait, I don't know, Rudy. And then Draymond won it the year before. Yeah. yeah no. What's Nikola's last name? Nikola Vucevic. 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 Nikola Vucevic. He's in a good spot right there. Little, little. Ugh. I don't know what I was gonna say. He's probably the player that he's just good on a kind of bad team. Mm-hmm. Son of a bitch, you know who he didn't put on here? Oh. Mo fucking Bamba. Oh, no. Is he considered a center? Yes. <laughs> he wasn't a starting oh. center. Oh, it's because it's Nikola Vucevic. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Mo Bamba is a center. Sure. Mo Bamba is going elite well, automatically yes. because he has a song after him. And, yeah. Uh, next, we got Steven Adams. I think he deserves to be where he's yeah. at. Steven Adams is great. Okay. He's really good. He's really good. I think he's a little bit overpaid, too. Just because of um, yeah, but in all fairness, though, you, you need to do something because OKC yeah. is not a good roster. Well, so. he he got he was again that contract when they needed to keep him. It, well, that, that's me. Like they needed to keep him, or else they would have legit nothing. Like like I guess they have Chris Paul now, but he is not going to be a Thunder by season's end. Yeah. Next we got Marcus Aldridge. Great. Then we got really good. Mark Gasol. 
Yeah, Lamarcus Aldridge probably could make an argument for being in that best category, yeah, but he's getting a little bit older. I would agree. Yeah. Oh, we got Jared Allen. Jared, Jared Allen. Allen. Jared Allen. That guy is a motherfucking beast on defense. That is why I put him that high. He is an animal. One of the only six players in NBA history to block LeBron. Damn. Yeah. And not no. And not only I watch actually watch the game live. He not only blocked him. Yeah. He's, oh my. He. Oh my gosh. Playing against him in two K is not fair. You can drive into the paint against Brooklyn because he will literally swat everything. Yeah. It's not fair. <laughs> He could be probably the next Rudy Gobert. I believe it. If he keeps his potential up. I believe it. Better offensively, though? Uh, maybe a little bit. About it. No, they're like, about the same, yeah. I think. I mean, I'd maybe put Jared Allen maybe at the same. No, I would like, put Rudy Gobert at about no, just half because, step. like, Jared Allen's a little bit more athletic. Like, because he's not as bulky. Like, just yeah, like, that's true. So he can put, put a, little, a little bit of a better post move. Yeah. Whereas Rudy Gobert is just, I mean, he's just so bulky. So it doesn't look as great. Right. Next, we got Miles Turner. Miles Turner's great. A couple great. of years ago, he probably could have made an argument to be a best best. Center. I think he still can. I think he's great. Yeah, because he he he's surprisingly he's actually one of the more efficient big shooting big men. Like among centers, especially, he's probably the second best shooting big man, or maybe probably he's easily top five best shooting centers in the league. I'll say that. All right. Next, we're gonna go with. The best category, the elite category. We're oh. going to start with the worst ranked here. Uh, Nikola Jokic from the Denver Nuggets. I think he's the best center in the league, in my opinion. I think he's the second best center in the league. I think, I think he's the second but as well. Ooh. I also take that with a grain of salt because I also I honestly do have a bias. But no, but the thing is, though, is I don't have a bias, but even, like, I agree. Like, like the, the guy you are about to mention... He's he's really good. I don't think he's the best center, but he's definitely second, without oh, a doubt. Potentially MVP of the year yeah, at I, this point. Try, I don't know. I don't know why I was trying to keep it a secret. Yeah, we're talking about cat. And if you look at them, they're, they're only they're only point zero one away from each other, so they're both really good. Right. Yeah. No, I I don't. Th- I think it's definitely without a doubt. I would that, honestly say it's one A and one. I honestly would agree. Like, I, I would say Jokic just because I think he plays the all-around game better than Cat. Just the all-around yeah. game. I've never seen a center pass the way he does. I've never yeah. seen a center shoot the way he does. He plays fantastic defense, and he does what centers got to do on top of that. Cat's great, though. Cat's really good. Yeah. Cat's amazing. I love Cat. He's my third favorite player in the NBA. I, yeah, he's my favorite player in the Timberwolves. He's the reason I, I still am invested in Minnesota. I think if Ryan Saunders can keep up what he does... Here's the thing. I think Cat is a little skewed in his, like, early part of his – like, the middle early part of his career is because of uh, Tom Thibodeau. I think he was True. a horrible coach for Cat. Like, like, literally the exact opposite of what Cat is right. is what Thibodeau coaches. Yeah. I mean, so it's just – Man, it really, I think it really fucked up the development of Cat and Williams, Not, too. Well, and that's thing, like, having Jimmy Butler and Tom Thibodeau, they ruined that franchise. Ruined them. Talk about Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler used to be on the team of the next player. The, this is our top ranked center. Supposedly, us, he's the best. Joel Embiid. What a bitch. I mean, I'd put him at three just because of his defensive presence. And then he contributes more on offense than, like, Gobert and Jared Allen and stuff like that. Yeah, but if you're having go one on one in a fight, Cat would win because he was winning that fight before Ben Simmons' bitch ass. Choke hold. Yeah, Ben Simmons, no fine, no suspension, puts Cat in fucking chokehold. Yeah, what a bitch. That's the only reason Embiid won the fight. Just remember, Embiid um, hunted lions. Did, <laughs> but Embiid did you tries guys... in the fucking hallways of the lions. I know, did you <laughs> Did you guys see Carl Anthony Towns' Instagram Straight post? fucking Dude, have, you seen, have you seen it, Ben? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen it, Ben? Oh, oh my god! I think it's so funny. All the Timberwolves players commented on it. It was it was amazing. Oh my god! I, I had to save it and like send it to every basketball fan. So like you guys, this oh is god. not fun. This is like savage. It was so great. I loved it. So that was our NBA center. Yep. Yeah, uh, next week, depending on Noah's presence, we'll either be doing mascots or power forwards. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a what a change! <laughs> what a shift in momentum there. Oh well, Noah. We, we like you here because you're well, basketball. I appreciate that. I do like me some basketball. Next. Next. Andrew Wiggins 
Andrew Luck. I said he could win most improved player of the year, and so far that's the one prediction I've made right so far about basketball. Because I said oh, the Kings would be a top three seed, which the Kings are coming back. Like, they're playing better now. Right. And then I said Steph Curry was going to win MVP. That's not going to well, happen for sure. That got hurt. Yeah. Poor guy. I feel bad for Steph Curry. I don't know if I necessarily do. Um, <laughs> like, I feel bad he got hurt. He plays but hard. Like, but it's just, I don't know, you're wasting a year of Steph Curry. Like, it's honestly good Steph Curry's resting because he gets an extra year. Right. Feel like the Adrian Peterson effect, you know? He's mm-hmm. that so many years, and that's why he's probably yeah. good now. I think it's really good for that team, like you said, they're going to be good next year. That they have both of their best players on their team out resting, getting prepared for next season. Yeah. Well, I guess Clay Thompson is a little bit more because he literally can't do anything. Yeah, but, but he yeah. went back out there and shot those three point, those free throw. Think about it. Clay Thompson, my hero. Uh, but now we're gonna go to NFL pickums. Yeah. This week. What? This week is sponsored by. The Side Squad Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, well, and everywhere else. Yep, we're our own sponsor this week. Wait, who did I say was going to record in the NASCAR segment? We're, we're, we're done with uh, the other car. We're not going to even mention it anymore. Shout out to Pat McAfee. We miss you, buddy. What is... Uh, M&M car? Sarah car? Go Dad? Old Spice car because of... Old uh, Spice. Ca- not Cow Rick. Um, Bush? No, because of Dow Tech Holiday Nights. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I yeah, said yeah. One, The W bread car. Again, I'm not going to say it. Right. That's in the past. But because then um, his friend, I can't think of Ricky Bobby's. I don't know. Well, the it was something. Car. It was something Rip, Cal Ripken Jr. There you go. Cal Ripken Jr. raced the Old Spice car. So we go Old Shake Spice. Shake bike. Shake and bite, baby. All right. Huh. <laughs> Go Old that. Spice car. Old Spice, if you want to sponsor us, go ahead. Yeah. Because you have connections with uh, NFL. Send us some stuff, too. Yeah. We like Old Spice Send as a brand. Send us some mon- mantra, mantra, sweat. mantra sweat stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is he really good for the Redskins? Yeah. yeah. Is he cool? Yeah. Good for him. He's not a Redskin. But yeah, that's the thing. Is, I mean, that, that's a the problem. Guy. That's what happens with the when you're on a bad team. Sorry, I didn't mean to like throw that whole thing Oh, no off, problem. Go Old Spice car. We talk about team. That's bad here. Then we're talking about a team who might be turning their season around. Yeah, the Thursday night game is Steelers Browns. There's not any lot of good Thursday night games. I think they kind of do that on purpose. I think they just get rid of Thursday night games. I think they game. have Thursday night games just so they can get views on. Probably. Yeah. Just to have another well, night that I can have like it. it. It's just because like you like you know you're, it's Thursday night games. Like, oh, what are you watching football? Right. right yeah. The thing though is, like you said, like you're just shitty games. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, they're like you put them on. A the lot back. of the times, they turn. They like, turn out to be decent. Even if you put them on the background, that's still range for the NFL, which means more money. Yeah. So uh, I'll go first for this one. All right. Honestly, I, the Steelers are, are, are kind of on the hot streak. Uh, I think the Browns are just, just came out of a win. I don't. This one could be this one. The Browns could blow out the Steelers. The Steelers could blow out the Browns, or it could be a a ten ten tie, and I I wouldn't even care. So I put 29-15 Browns. I think Nick Chubb gets rolling. He's going to get a couple of rushing touchdowns. And the Steelers, the Browns are going to get another one. Nice. Um, I think this could be the start of a late of a late surge. Wow. By, oh, it's Flash. We're all we're active. Look what it says, though. What does it say? Ben. Oh, it says Ben. <laughs> wow. wow. That's crazy. Anyways. Anyway. Yeah, I think this could be the start of the big turnaround for Cleveland that may or may not come up short in terms of making the playoffs, but I still think this could be the start of the surge. Um, I do think that Cleveland at home, coming off a big win, an emotional win, they're going to want to go up against their division rivals. I think the Browns are going to win 21 I know it's... I'm going to cry. You left. Oh. Yeah, get back on the document. Oh, shoot. Did I leave it? Oh, my gosh. I'll talk next. Uh, I think the Steelers are going to win this one. Steelers are on a really hot streak. Mika Fitzpatrick, defensive player of the year. Really, that team has really stepped up without with Mika Fitzpatrick. James Conner is going to be back this week. Uh, with that, oh, James yeah. Conner being back this week. Out again next week. Well, he'll be in this <laughs> week, and I think that's will be part Probably of the yeah. difference maker. Um, 28-21, Steelers get the win. 
contest for that AFC. I think they make the wild card. AFC wild card spot. Well, I got the Steelers winning 20-10. I'll keep mine short because I have a thing. If the Kaepernick workouts go good, honestly, why would the Steelers not want to take a chance on him? It would be a perfect fit because think about it. Yeah. They really don't have much at quarterback right now. That's true. Worst case scenario is you have – you cut Kaepernick. Yeah, you, you pick him up. You probably would – you'd have probably decided to a veteran's minimum, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You pick him up, sign a veteran's minimum, which I think is – a million a year. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but think yeah. about it. Steelers win this game. It's a perfect opportunity for Kaepernick. Because mm-hmm. again, you're you know you need because like their quarterback play hasn't been affecting their wins or losses. You know, it's been purely defense. Mason Rudolph is doing pretty decent. He has. Yeah, but like you know, he's not like a game changer. He's not. You know, me, let's no. be for real here. Mika Fitzpatrick is the reason right. that that team's winning. Mason Rudolph is not the future. Yeah. No, he's a good transitional quarterback to what will be their future. Plus, you know, like, I just think Kaepernick would be good for the Steelers, especially if they win this week, because then that puts them in a position to possibly want to like, upgrade. Have a winning quarterback. record. Yeah. So, uh, next we got Sunday Night Football. This is not going to be a barn burner. This is going to be a dumpster fire. Well, okay. No. It I, won't, I don't like it. It's going to be a good game. I don't like it at all. I was going to say, I think it could be a good game. I think it could be a good game, too. I think it's going to be a horrible offensively. Uh, no, no I, I agree. I think offensively it might have been great, but I think... So it's going to be a good game. It's just not going to be a high scoring. It's just going to be not, a good defensive battle. It's not going to be a fun game I, to watch. I still, for just... I still am I'm still on the board that it's going to be a decent defense game. It's not going to be like, it's not going to be like a... 10 to 15 slugfest. I, I have the Rams winning. I still believe in the Rams. 24 to 21. I think Goff has been definitely been shaky recently, to say the least. I think he'll get himself a little bit together against the Bears. I think Khalil Mack should give him problems. But I think that uh, he makes – he holds on to it for one more week. And I don't know. He just He's not going to be – he's not going to be – they're, they're going to win because of him. 24-21, Rams. I, I would like to go last, please. Okay, okay. I can go next. Um, I think it will be a defensive matchup. Um, I got a fairly low scoring game. I got the Rams winning 17-10. to 10. Um, Bears offense is bad. Bears offense is really bad. It yeah. is bad. Mr. Jared Goff is better than Trubisky. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, um, yes, he is. But... Well, and plus, I think the problem is the expectation for the Bears offense like two years ago was actually really high because they brought in Allen Robinson and Trey Burton. And they were like, holy and shit. Taylor Gabriel. Yeah, and Taylor Gabriel. And we have a young quarterback. Right. And they have a good running back. But, yeah. Yeah. They, 17 They have a new streak coming up, but yes, they have him. Yeah. Well, they even got Montgomery. Yeah. Montgomery is probably up there for offensive rookie of the year just because of the we class. Just, we just talked about it. Yeah. Actually, yeah. All right. So last week. And the Rams lost to the Steelers. My friend Cooper Cup had zero yards. And I was heartbroken. Really quick. I just want to say this real quick. Fuck the Giants offensive line. One rushing yard from Saquon Buck. Are you fucking kidding me? One rushing yard. Do you realize that is the second lowest rushing yard to um, carries ever in history of the NFL? Actually funny. You want to know who number one is? Reggie Bush. Uh, I knew that actually. <laughs> Because he actually finished the year with negative rushing yards. That's actually a different stat, though. Reggie Bush oh. actually once rushed for negative six yards on 11 carries. Oof, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, we can get back to it. All right, Cooper Cup had zero yes last week. And I think that they won't allow that to happen again. Uh, especially after a couple weeks ago, him having, what was it, 200 and something yeah. yards? 225. Do you think Cooper Cup? Moving is the, the key. I to think the Rams that's the offense. key to the Rams' sure. offense. Cooper Cup moving, get that run game, eh, kind of going. I mean, you don't have to have it full He's blown. He's going to the Bears. Right. Which is the Bears. Just get a couple good passes to Cooper Cup, get him a couple touchdowns for that in fantasy football, and go on your way 20 to 16. I think this is a bad Sunday night football game. I would rather see a game like the Texans Ravens coming up. I'd rather see that so. on Sunday night, but I guess that's oh, the no. game we're getting. I think, it's okay. I think the Monday night game is also going to be okay. I agree with you on that. Oh, really? I'm going to go last. I'm sorry, Noah. No, you're fine. 
The LA Rams are a broken football team. Oh, no. They are a team that is lacking confidence. Sean McVay is not the guru we all think he is. He is starting to get figured out. The Patriots found something in that offense, and it's been broken ever since. We have no running game. We have a terrible offensive line. Did you say Sean McVay? Sean McVay. This is a guy defending Sean McVay. I don't want to argue with you, but... Just hear me out. Okay. Just saying. This is a guy that was defending Sean McVay. Oh, yeah, and I and I love Sean McVay, but things that things need to change with his offense, and he's and he's admitted it. Sean McVay has come out and said, "I need to coach better. I need to come up with better game plans week after week." He is openly admitting that, and I'm happy he is because it's not on on all players. It had a lot to do with coaching. Sean McVay has not had a good coach. You had a question? Yeah, just really quick. Was Jared Goff there before or after McVay? He was there. Jared Goff was there his rookie year, and then the next year Sean McVay came in. Okay. And Goff was awful. Go- Go- Goff was historically awful, so but he was know? also had an historically awful football team with a historically awful coach. But with that being said, this is a team that's lacking confidence, not on the defense side of the ball. Since we got Jalen Ramsey, your defense has been balling right now. I'm, I love how our defense is playing. But the last two years, and what's got us to the Super Bowl was offense, not defense. We have no running game. We have one of the worst offensive lines this year in football, and that's not even an exaggeration. I think that's the Achilles heel. It is, because you know what it is? Because I've actually defended Jared Goff quite a bit this year. I, 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 Last week was not on the offensive line. It was, but it wasn't. Like, Jared Goff's mental clock is just off. It is just off, and you can tell. He's rushing passes. He's just pressure when there's no pressure. Like He just looks nervous all the time. So in every game that we have lost this year, if you even have half of a decent pass rusher, we're done. We're literally done for. That is why I think Chicago is going to beat us. They're going to just p- apply the pressure. They're going to make our offense uncomfortable. And our defense is going to play great. They're going to play really good. They're going to get a couple turnovers off of Mitch Trubisky. Heck, they might even get another defensive touchdown. But <laughs> they really – no, yeah, like they might. You know, but this Rams team is just, and they're trapped. They are just trapped because they have no first round pick for the next two years. Yeah, because they traded. And now we don't have a future as of now. I have a theory of how to fix that. I'm not going to get into that today, but because we're talking about pickums. But I do think the Bears are going to win strictly off defense. And it's just going to be upsetting. It's just going to make me upset. 20 to 12, Chicago with the win. Next yeah, game could be a real game changer for the AFC West and yeah. the AFC in general. This is, yeah, this is a, it's an important game for the Chiefs. It's Chiefs charged with Monday night. Very important. The Chiefs need to win this to stay on track. Uh, the Chargers have been up and down. Well, they're, they're bad. Chargers are bad. They've been up on the upswing recently. They've had, they they lost to the Raiders, though. But it's like exactly right, what good. happened with the Broncos. I know, but the but the thing is now is now the Chargers are what three and six, three and three seven? seven. The Broncos are in front of them right now. Yeah, right. the Chargers. That means their last place. Yeah. Ooh. Oof, the, but the it's Char- still a winnable. I think the Chargers. It's certainly a close game, I think, and the Chargers are going to give the Chiefs trouble. But I think not only do the Chiefs need to win this, I think Patrick Mahomes uh, obviously didn't play. Didn't play that great. I it, watched a little bit of the game. He play. played really good against Tennessee. Yeah, yeah he didn't turn the ball over, threw a couple touchdowns. It's just his defense didn't show up to help him. He, he wasn't, oh, my God, Patrick Mahomes. No, but, but he had a really, like, solid game. Like, I wish Jared Goff would play like that every game. Well, anyway, I think it's going to be fairly close. I had 20, <coughs> 21 Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes was on game winning drive. Uh, it's going to be a good one. He may not buy it for Chiefs fans, so. Wait. Did you guys say Patrick Mahomes had a good or bad game? Good. In a good game. Not a Patrick Mahomes game, but a good well, that's game. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, like... Are you talking, like, quarterback? Good. Quarterback, like, good, yeah. Mahomes, good. Because quarterback, Mahomes good. good. No, well, Mahomes and, good. And, and, no, and that's a crazy... Like, Mahomes put, has put himself on such a high standard that, you know, oh, he didn't throw for 400 passing yards. Oh, that's crazy. He still had 300-plus passing yards. A yeah. couple touchdown passes, didn't turn the ball over. Hell, I would kill for that every week from Jared Goff. <laughs> Damn. But anyway, oh, it's my turn. I, I, I'm I not going to go any deep in this because I agree with everything Ben said. It's going to be a good divisional game. Patrick Mahomes needs to win this game. He's 0-3 in his last three starts, but I think he turns it around. 32-30, Kansas City wins on a game-winning drive. I think Patrick Mahomes goes 0-4. Ooh. I am charged winning this game. Ooh. I just don't know why. I think the Chiefs... 
or Chiefs are struggling. They're struggling. I think the dysfunction is going to be real. I think that they're going to realize, like, they, they outside of Mahomes, that team on paper sucks. True. Well, like, it, Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. Kelsey. Defensively. Yeah. Defensively, yes. But not even suck. that. Like, their offensive line is horrible. Like, we talk about bad right. offensive lines. Outside of Fisher's, Mitchell Swartz. Fisher's out, it. though. Fisher's decent. Well, yeah, Fisher's decent. But that's the thing is, like, they realize how important it is to have a left tackle with a quarterback like Mahomes. You have to have a guy protecting his blind side. But it's not right. going to work. Sure. Especially a guy, like, again, like Mahomes, who needs the time to get the ball downfield. Um, and I think the Chargers have a decent defense. Um, they have Joey decent. Bosa, who's yeah. going to attack the left side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great yeah. pass yeah. rush. Great pass rush. Their pass rush actually has been really good in the last yeah. couple weeks. it has. And I just think it's going to kill Kansas City. I mean... I still have the game being close. I have it as a touchdown game, but yeah, I think the Chargers are gonna win twenty eight twenty one. I also got the Chargers winning this one. Twenty one to seventeen. Uh I think the Chiefs Super Bowl great greatest team in the AFC besides the Patriots. I think that's over with. Um and, and as much as I, I, I know you're talking, I hate that. Why are there no teams to compete with the Patriots in the AFC? Oh, I hate it so much. The Baltimore the Ravens. Ravens. The Ravens. Ravens. Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore Texans. Not, for, not right now. But. What are, yeah, Baltimore Houston. We'll get to it. 20 to 16, or what? 21 to 17. Chargers coming out with the win. This next one's. I'm not ready for this game. You stole my game of the week. Yeah. <laughs> I chose it weeks ago. But, uh. <laughs> It's the Broncos versus the Vikings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's how it goes. Yeah. But uh, I don't think the Broncos will win, but I'm predicting the Broncos to win here. I think Minnesota's too good. Um, Kirk Cousin ranks uh, first in passing touchdowns, first in passing yards, first in quarterback rating. Really? Tied for first in interceptions with 100 attempts. After Sunday's game. Like, low end. Yeah. Which Holy shit. scares me. That's so my like quarterback. So, <laughs> like, so what was the last step? Because over the last 100 over the last of these interceptions? He has one interception. That was a bullshit interception. That was the Diggs one where Diggs yeah. swatted the ball. Or, no, it popped out of his hand. Yeah. On the sideline. I so, like, Kirk. Well, yeah, actually, I guess I would believe that because his quarter or his touchdown interception ratio ever since that shitty game against, Green, against Bay. Green Bay, he has like a 15, 16 to 1 touchdown interception ratio. But yeah, I still have the Broncos somehow winning 24 <laughs> to 21. I like that. 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 Oh yeah, that's that. I remember when I made that choice. That was that was the deciding factor. And I think the Vikings are the better team here. But I think for some reason it's just gonna be a weird game for the Vikings. It's gonna be close, and I think the Vikings are gonna win. But don't don't sleep on the Broncos too much. Wow, that's the I first time you've said that. that. I, and that's coming from the Vikings fan. Like I honestly, I'm scared they're gonna sleep on the Broncos because they um. So they against Dallas. For... You know, they won against Dallas in a prime time game. They're gonna go and be like, oh, it's Denver at home. You know, their quarterback isn't very good. You know, it's Case Keenum's return to U.S. Bank. No, it's not. Oh, well, sorry, he did that with Washington. No. Yeah, sorry. That was with Washington. It's sorry. Allen's second game. Yeah, sorry. But, yeah, I don't know. I just, I think they're going to kind of sleep on him. I think they might dot up our secondary, even with your shitty passing offense. What are you talking about? They have Cortland Sutton. They have Noah Fant. I will say tight ends, like, they're kind of hit or miss against the Vikings. Because, like, Eric Hendricks is really good. He's probably the right. best coverage linebacker right now. Um, and, but also on the flip side, you know, if you put him on bar, bar is going to get fucking killed by fan and just destroyed. Yeah. Um, yeah, That's I still have the Vikings winning close game, but I honestly, I would be sad if the Vikings lost, but I can honestly see them losing this game. I have the Vikings winning though, 27-20. I, I don't think there's any chance Denver beats Minnesota, honestly. Get out of here. You have Kirk Cousins, who's obviously playing at an insane level right now. And you mean to tell me that they're not going to beat the Broncos? 26-14 Minnesota. Yeah, Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. Patrick Mahomes was king of the Chiefs. Killed us. Killed us. Like, 
Broncos are still ranked the fourth defense in the NFL. I will somehow. say though, your guys' offensive, Our red offensive zone line is really defense bad. is amazing. But your guys' offensive line is horrible. Right. And the Vikings have two of the best pass rushers. Right. And on top of that, it doesn't seem to matter how good a defense we play. We still find a way to give Dalvin Cook. They still find a way to give Dalvin Cook the ball and get him his yards. Find a way to give him the passing game. They they literally just dumped a bunch of screens him against Dallas and it worked to perfection. They'll yeah. find they'll find a way to make it work. Dalvin Cook was leading us at one point in passing yards. Really? Yeah. Whack. Is that everybody correct? I think so. Yeah. Okay. You think so? I picked a real barn burner this week. Holy shit, a barn burner. Oh, yeah, it's a barn burner. I'm so excited absolute, about this game. Absolute the barn burner. will be burning. Yeah, there's going to be fucking dog shit on fire everywhere. I have, I picked the Jets Redskins game because Duncan took the Vikings game. All I'm going to say is I have the score negative four to three. Nobody wins. Damn. This could be the. <laughs> negative four. All right. <laughs> Nice. Yes. Two reverse safeties. Uh, quick fun fact. Four points and they didn't have it only once in the NFL. Really? Yep. It was in the 1960s. It was 10 to 4. Nice. One team had two sacks. And wow. Uh, uh, anyway, I'll go. I think both teams are awful. Both teams are awful. I think the Jets are slightly less awful, though. I think at least the Jets... No, Sam Donald is their quarterback, and they have a couple. Okay, Lev Bell, they still Lev Bell. Robbie Anderson is, I think, still healthy. I mean, the Jets are bad, but they're not dysfunctional. Like not yeah. as dysfunctional as the Redskins. And they got Jamal Adams. And they still got like they still have a couple good pieces, and they're they're bad. Like collectively, they're a bad team, but they're not like I feel like the Redskins are like falling apart. Yeah, I will say the other thing. Like, on a more serious note for my prediction is um, the Jets, like I said, just held Saquon Barkley to one yard. Like, that's insane. So, I mean, I think they're just going to kill AP and they're going to kill Chris Thompson. Like, there's no way those running backs are getting out of the backfield. That's why I had the Jets win 21-7. to <laughs> um, 23-18. Yeah. Yeah. New York. Wow, 18. Mm-hmm. Redskins are putting up 18. Wow. Yeah. I got it, mean. 14 to 12. With you got the Redskins. the Redskins getting their first victory of the year. Why? No, It'll be second. their second. Their second? Yeah. Getting yeah, their Bengals second. The Bengals are the only team that's still. Oh, defeated. yeah. Because it was weird last week, all those teams won when they shouldn't have. So this week, the Redskins need to be like, huh. And you can't have Dwayne Haskins start his career out like 0 oh, and like 8. Yeah, he will. Yeah, you don't want to He's, do he's that. a project quarterback that got put in the league. He's yeah. the next Vince Young. Just watch. I think Adrian Peterson is going to find a way to score a touchdown, though. I have no idea. Like, if you can hold Saquon fucking Barkley to one rushing yard. Adrian Peterson is a Saquon Barkley. I can see him giving him a game of rushing yards. I don't know. It's still just insane. I just wonder. We'll continue. Interesting. Yeah. Is no. it uh, my game? No, yeah. It is. Um, this is going to be an interesting game. The Patch. The I think Pats. it's going to be too. I think it's going to be interesting. The Patriots are in Philadelphia in a hostile Holy environment. Shit. Ben has a blow. I do not. This is an intriguing matchup because I, the Patriots coming off a bye. They are coming off a loss against Baltimore, so they're trying to regroup. Philadelphia trying to gain some ground in the NFC East and try and turn their season around, figure out their woes. Um, Philadelphia is an emotional football team. They play with a lot of emotion. That's how they win. That's how they won their Super Bowl. That's how they, that's just how they play. It's going to be a hostile environment. The crowd's going to be crazy. Um, I think Carson Wentz, um, because who did Philly play last week? Did Philly have the bye last week? Uh, yeah. the bye, but I'm not sure if they I yeah. think they did. I yeah, yeah they both did. did. Yeah, so both teams are coming off the bye. So and it, I'm using that situation. I give the advantage of the home team. I think Carson Wentz is going to have a r- really good game. I think they're going to exploit the holes that the Ravens shown, and now they're going to face a quarterback with an actual. Okay, Lamar Jackson has an arm, but in terms of passing, Carson Wentz is the better quarterback than Lamar Jackson. It's probably the best passing quarterback they've faced so far. Oh, not easily. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah. 
I think Carson Wentz is going to do some things to that Patriots defense. He's going to make them uncomfortable. I think they're going to have no problem moving the ball down the field. So I think that defense will continue to be exploited. Um, I do think that the Tom Brady struggles are going to come to an end starting this week. But I will give Philadelphia the slight edge because they need it more than New England. They're going to play like it. 31-28 Eagles with the upset. I, I have every week we talk about Patriots. I have picked against the Patriots, and the one week I'm gone, I'm not sure if you guys talk about Patriots games. They lost. I said that was like the one week that I picked the Patriots at worst. So I am going to stick with my guns. Eagles are going to roll up here. The Patriots are coming off a loss. They finally played a good team in the Ravens. They don't know what to do with themselves. They're they're so high and mighty, and they got shoved off their little pedestal. <laughs> the Eagles, I don't think it's I, I put my score as insane. I don't think it's going to be insane. Really, realistically, it's not going to be insane. I still think the Eagles can win this game. I put forty five seven. Realistically, probably won't be that, but I, I'm going to stick with them. Yeah, realistically, it's probably going to be like forty nine to fourteen. Okay. Yeah, realistically, maybe fifty two to seven. We'll see how long the game is. But um, Philadelphia wins. Here, I'll step in for Brennan real quick. But guys, Jared Stidham. Yeah, yeah, Jared Stidham. No, 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 even better. Who's that wide receiver they talked about all the time? Um, is, it, is it like Henry or Henry or Nikhil? Nikhil Harry? Not Nikhil, no, no, the, 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 the Dorsett? No, no, like the rookie. bad, the rookie undrafted guy. Oh, I don't remember his name. He's got to do fantastic. Yeah, no. Seven God. touchdowns. Yeah, guys, no. Jared Stidham. Tom Brady. Jared Stidham. Jared Stidham. <laughs> yeah, look up. Why don't you look that up here real quick? Yeah, just start, uh, just start reading them all. Going back to the Broncos game real quick. Cool. Broncos-Vikings game. It's interesting. You're talking about... Uh, Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers. Jared Sam, Jacoby Myers game. What do you think that's that? yeah, Guys, that's going to be the connection for the next 20 years. The Patriots Dynasty is going to live forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. There, there was the weekly Patriots rate. Right? <laughs> Why they're going to be... But back to the Broncos game real quick, uh, because I just saw an interesting stat. The highest rated graded linebackers in the NFL right now are Eric Kendricks with a 92.5 grade or whatever. And then the second is actually Alexander Johnson for the Broncos. Most people probably don't know even nope. who that is. But uh, I just saw that, and I was like, whoa. Is Corey Littleton on there? He is not. Ooh. It goes Kendricks, Johnson, Levante David, Luke Keechley. Jay and Brown. Um, Eric Hendricks is actually having Loki defensive player of the year type of year in advanced stats. Like, he's not going to win it because he doesn't get the sacks, the interceptions. Right. But holy shit, he's really good at defense. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, no, like, pay the man. Pay him. We did. We got him locked. Oh, did you? Yeah, before the season. Smart. Smart move. Actually, we locked him up two years ago because I remember we were at uh, Subway by New Tech. Well, Smart move. Kendrick's got a kind of throwback. Smart move, Vikings. Uh, all right. Did Duncan do his, or do you want me to go? Or... Uh, I'll go. I think it's going to be the Patriots. They're going to win. Uh, Philly's going to put up a fight, but it's not going to end up the way Philly wants it to be. It's going to be 30-17, Patriots. I just don't think the Eagles are a very functional team right now. Like, they are just got they got a lot of problems going on. Um, And I think the Patriots are going to exploit their – Shitty secondary. I mean, horrible secondary. I got the Patriots winning 31-21. One week I'm picking the Patriots, actually. Wait, wait a second. I'm just looking at Brendan's prediction. He predicted 22-16 to Patriots. He thinks Philly has a chance. We're in trouble. All right, so those of you wins. Uh, my game. <laughs> my game was interesting, and this is why. They, it's 49ers Cardinals, and they played two weeks ago, and it was a close game. Right. I... I so that game was actually 28 25 49ers. They won on a field goal. I think that was this, a Thursday night game, right? Yeah, I think so. Like just two weeks. It's a good yeah, Thursday, that was a Thursday night game. I remember that. that was a Thursday night I, game. I, I think it's just weird because how, how soon they're playing again. You know, just usually you usually don't see a two week turnaround yeah. play the same team. I think the Cardinals are going to come back and they're going to win this one. I think oh. it was a close game last time. I think the Cardinals surprise the Niners, and the Cardinals are going to do it again, and they're going to win. It's going to be a flip. It's going to be twenty-eight, twenty-five. This time, <laughs> the Cardinals actually have 
their kicker, Chad, Chad, Chaz, whatever his name is, is actually just been playing really good, and I think he's going to score the game really good. Chad is, I'm not going to try his name. You know who I'm talking about, the Cardinals kicker. Cat and Zero? That guy. That guy's been playing pretty decent this season. <laughs> nice. Yeah, um, the biggest thing when it comes to young teams, especially young teams when they're on a winning streak like this, is how do you handle the next week? How do you handle after a big loss? Um, I think that the Cardinals are going to upset the 49ers. I think that they're going to find things that Russell Wilson was able to do because they have a very similar, obviously not as good as Russell Wilson, but they have a very similar quarterback in Kyler Murray that they feel like they can exploit. I think they're going to rely, hev- not heavy, but they're going to run the ball a little bit more this week, try and keep the ball out of the Niners' hands. Um, the, the Cardinals have done a pretty good job at stopping the run throughout the year. Not like great, but that's been their best spot on the defense. Um, but I just think that there's going to be a little bit of a letdown for San Fran. I don't think it'll last long. But I but since they played just so recently, I think the Cardinals are going to just be ready. I think it's going to be a good fun. It's going to be fun. I think Conor Murray's going to have a big breakout game. I have 34-20 Arizona with the upset. Holy shit. I have literally a one-point difference from the score. I didn't even really? believe it was. I got the nine, except it's flipped. Oh. I got the Niners winning 35-20. to 20. Ooh. Um, yeah, I think the Cardinals will take an early lead, but I think uh, San Fran will just come back and take it, and then take it the rest of the way. So Yeah. yeah. All right. I got an interesting start, stat to start off with. Um, Kyler Murray is one of four quarterbacks to start his first 10 career starts with 2,500 passing Can yards I try to name? Yeah, and 250 name? rushing yards, yeah. Is it Dante Culpepper, Cam Newton, and... Yeah, I heard the third one. It's Lamar. It's not Lamar. It's uh, Sean Watson. Yep. Huh. Wow, you guessed that. It's almost like you just saw It's almost like I early. saw yeah. the uh, image on Twitter. Oh, that's crazy. Honestly, I would have never thought of Dante Culpepper in that. Like, I know he was a multi, like... He was a baller, though. Yeah, he was a baller. But, like, in the sense of, like, when I think of Cam Newton, Dante Culpepper, and Deshaun Watson, like, I don't know, like, maybe I could see Deshaun Watson or Cam Newton and Dante Culpepper similar, but, like, I don't know. Uh, I thought it was weird, those four. Like, those four in particular, like, yeah. I just don't see the similarities between all four of them. That's true. They all have 2,500 passing yards and 350 rushing yards in two games. But uh, I think that shows that Kyler Murray's... Uh, it's gonna be great uh, for this Cardinals. Could have gotten three hundred million dollars. That's true. true. He was really but, uh, good at baseball, guys. Yeah, I think they're gonna exploit the Forty uh, ers but I don't think it's gonna be enough. They're gonna rely on the run. They're gonna get a uh, one-two-three action. Chase Edmonds, Kenyon Drake, and David Johnson. Uh, I think they're all three of them are gonna have decent games because they're gonna have all three of them play. Um, they had a lot of trouble stopping Kenyon Drake last time they played, and so yeah, I am in fantasy. Yeah, David Johnson didn't work. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but uh, twenty eight twenty seven, forty nine ers with the win, and then for Brendan's game, which will probably be game of the week, probably honestly, it's the Texans versus the Lamar Jackson Ravens. Yeah, so I think the Ravens are definitely hot coming off that win. I still think Texans are the overall better team. I think I, I, I think the Texans are going to win. I think it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a high-scoring game. I have 35-27 Texans. I got them Ravens winning. I think it'll be a pretty good game. I got the Ravens winning, though, 28-24. I'm really excited for this because this could just be AFC Championship matchups for the next how many years. Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, like mm-hmm. that is – we yeah. we win as fans because that's going to be so much fun mm-hmm. to watch, see those two young QBs go wild like this. Generation. That's what I mean. Like these are the, the futures of the NFL, and I'm so excited. I hope this is like a fun rivalry that we get to see for years to come because these are, these are the only two teams I think that can compete with New England. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give the edge to Baltimore because they're at home. I think Lamar Jackson will make just a little bit more plays late in the game. I think they're actually going to win on a game-winning field goal. I think it's going to be 27-24, but I do, Baltimore, but I do think Lamar and Deshaun Watson are going to play 
just great, great football games. I said my Stokes fans. All right. So another interesting stat. Yeah, Lamar Jackson. Start this one off. <laughs> Barn burner. Lamar Jackson became the first player in NFL history to post a perfect passer rating in multiple games of the same season, minimum of 17 attempts per game. Which I think it's kind of convenient. I think I, it I is, did too. See that too. He did it week one, and then he did it week ten. Like, the first quarterback to ever. Shh. We don't talk about but, but that like, part. But, but even <laughs> you take it away, like, even if it's, like, you, yeah, they're bad teams, but, like, right. The only player to ever do No, I know. It's still really crazy. impressive. It, like, it really, and you'll never be able to take that away, but it's just easy to say, well, he, he, I would hope he would tear up the Dolphins and the Bengals. Yeah. But, but but with that being said, he has been playing good all season, even against the good teams. Well, so. But even with the the last the last game he played. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was on 17 attempts. Yeah. Like, that was it. Like, he got it on 17 attempts, which is crazy. Because to get a QBR, most quarterbacks have to throw, you know, like, 30, 40 times. You think at the same time, though, if you're throwing 40 passes a game, it can be, like... Like, I get what you mean. It it would be harder the more you get it, because you have to keep your percentages like, it's tight. It's easier to, to complete 15 of 17 than 35 of 40. Yeah, which is true. Which is true, but you know, like to get the because the yards go into effect too, and everything too. Like yeah. he hit the yards mark too, which is just a crazy thing to me. Yeah, we also saw RG three in that game. Yeah, three Real Heisman big. winner, uh, Ingram, Lamar, RG three, all in the same backfield at once. It's crazy. Uh, Lamar uh, Jackson also just became just because I'm so high on Lamar Jackson. You're starting to sound like the NBA with all that. Oh yeah. Just became the sixth player in NBA or in, in NFL history with multiple career games with perfect passing ratings. The six players are Peyton Manning. I guess the other three. Yeah. Drew Brees. No. Drew Bledsoe. No. Kurt Warner. Yes. I want to say Tom Brady, but. Yes. How many more? Oh, two more besides. Lamar. Yeah. Philip Rivers? No. Nope. Aaron Rodgers? No. Nope. Brett Favre? No. Nope. Mark Starr? Wait, 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 what is it? Uh, he was with multiple perfect passer winning games, right? Yeah. Yeah, is that what the set is? With multiple career games with perfect passer rating, yeah. You said Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. You got Kurt Warner, you got Tom Brady. Tommy Tom, Lamar Jackson. Yes, I need two more. Carson Palmer. No. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Who is it? Brain targeting. Yeah, just tell me. Craig Morton. I would never would have gotten that. that. And Big Ben. Ah, oh, shit. I Makes sense. Yeah. Big Ben. But I have this score being a great high scoring game. Yeah, where the fuck did this come from? Oh, you were going to your scores. <laughs> What's your score? My score is 38 to 28, with the Ravens coming out on top and Lamar Jackson. Having 150 rushing yards and 300 passing yards on the day. Okay. Crazy. Thank you for listening to the Side Squad podcast. Wait, one more quick thing. It's oh. super big, I promise. Okay. The 2016, uh, or the Houston Nationals said today that, or they confessed to, in the 2016 World Series, they stole signs. I saw that. Everybody got pissed at you, Darvish, after that World Series because he played like shit. But it wasn't his fault because the batters knew what he was going to throw. Right. Yeah. Oh, shout out to all the, the World Series. Shout out to all the MLB uh, award winners over the last week. Yeah, Rocco Baladali. A lot of people were actually very pissed off. I it. saw that. And I'm like, okay, yeah. but the Yankees were a playoff team last year. Twins were like... And that's the thing is the expectation of the Twins is to be maybe 80 wins. Maybe. They won 101 and broke the home run record. Yeah. Oh, but the Yankees have a bunch of injuries. Yeah, but you're a Yankee team that's young and youthful, has depth. And you guys... Have a great... You have a great farm system, right. and you guys were supposed to be a playoff team. Yeah, I think Rocco deserved it. No, Rocco deserved it. But call me biased, but I think Rocco deserved it. And crazy, it. Twins have had two different managers win AL Manager yeah. of the Year in the last four years. Yeah. That's You'll, crazy. The only difference, though, is I think Rocco's actually here to stay, though. <laughs> really, that was weird. Mauder got that extension. I, you can do it. Oh, I'm, right. I'm Duncan. I am Noah. 
Well, there's no point in this week. What's that one guy's name? Uh, that always does uh, the main thing? Well, we'll You're see you next week. You're supposed to study it. <laughs>